Dixie's big up front. Dowling's big up front. Both sides of the football. And, you know, the wind's going to come in factor to be a big play with the weather. And the rain looks like it's going to hold off. So getting ready for an exciting uh, rivalry football game between well, Dowling Catholic and Valley. Well, you know, both teams coming off wins last week. Dowling got a big win on the road over uh, Waukee. And Valley with the win. Tigers trailed 7-2 to two at halftime. They ran off 20, uh, 21 unanswered points uh, to win it over a Southeast Polk team that's still in the top 10 by a score of 21-7. to seven. So the Tigers and Dowling both coming off wins, Matt. Yeah, the both teams look, you know, very balanced. You know, the thing about Dowling last week that was really good for us was the fact that we were able to run the ball after we passed the ball. I mean, we I didn't ex anticipate us to be able to um, throw the ball like we did early and set up the run for us. And Valley is just solid across the board. You know, you got a uh, Lombardi at uh, quarterback, and he's gonna he's gonna captain that thing. And and uh, they got some, as John said, they got some big guys up front. Number seventy-five, Rumsfield kid. He's he's a, he's a real road deal. grader. Yeah. yeah, he's a road yes. grader up there. And and uh, they got some tools. So it'll be it'll be a great matchup. Well, this is the 50th meeting between Dowling and Valley, and the Maroons have won uh, uh, six of the last eight meetings between the two teams. The Maroons are 10-7 and seven since 2006 in this series. And, John, you can probably throw that all out the, the window because tonight there's just two teams that want to win game two because every game means something, and tonight's no different. Valley has the experience at quarterback with Lombardi. He's been through this series, and Dowling will do it with their two uh, quarterbacks that did that led him to the victory last week oh absolutely mark i mean you can throw out the first game of the season any games played in the past uh how you know we were trying to figure out what type of a dowling team is going to be against this valley team compared to what they did last week throw it all out the window i think it's going to be a great game well both teams have running backs and they both have offensive lines matt so that's good does that mean a high scoring game which we thought would be last week yeah. with dowling and walkie or are we going to see them grind it out to a maybe 10-7 game? You know, these teams know each other so well that it ends up being trading punches early and uh, seeing where the weakness is or finding where the tweaks are this year for each team. And so I, I expect, uh, you know, a fairly conservative start by both because they know each other so well, a defense early and, and uh, offense late. But it's going to be a game of who can take advantage of the first turnover, the first mistake. Uh, special teams were a big part of this, John. You know that from watching these series. And you look at the defenses, and uh, the Valley defense always stellar, especially up front with their defensive line and linebackers in Dowling. Well, they're a young defense, but uh, basically the starters pitched a shutout last week against Waukee. So a lot to be held here as the rain starts to clear here at the stadium. Yeah, once again, I want to see how the defense uh, performs. Uh, we're, we're new up front, but we were quick to the football uh, last week, tackled well, defense played great. Uh, we know what the offense can do with our big offensive line led by, led by Jesse Alger and uh, Jason Murray. I want to see how these guys uh, face with this big offensive line for Valley. And, Matt, both teams, Valley's defense and Dowling's defense, forced four turnovers each. Dowling had two interceptions uh, with the Keel boys, the Keel brothers, and Valley had two interceptions, and both teams recovered two fumbles. So the defense has forced four turnovers last week and Dowling with only three penalties in their first game. So that's something to build on. It is, and that's why they're perennially the best. You know, you, you create turnovers and you make things happen for your team, give yourself a short field and, and go in there. And, and tonight it's going to be who, who can make that first turnover, who can create that first situation where you get a short field and they're able to take advantage of it. All right, you're listening to tonight's game on Iowa Catholic Radio, 88.5 and 94.5 FM and 11.50 AM here in Greater Des Moines. We're also streaming at iowacatholicradio.com. Tonight's game is simulcast with the folks at CISN.TV, and you can watch the game on CISN.TV as they webcast it. We're going to take a break here on the pregame show. Coming up, head coach Tom Wilson of Dowling Catholic. He's going to talk about tonight's matchups here at Drake Stadium. We're going to kick off at 730 Hope you join us. Along with Matt Madring, John Chido, I'm Mark Amadale here on Iowa Catholic Radio. Truck Month at Schottenkirk Chevrolet Waukee. Up to $10,000 off select new 18 Silverado 1500s. Includes the LTZs and high countries. New 18 Silverado Double Cab LT. $275 per month. Only $19.99 to its signing. Truck Month in Waukee. New 18 Equinox LT. $229 per month. Only $19.99 to its signing. New 18 Cruise. $179 per month. Only $19.99 to its signing. Plus 20% off new Spark, Sonic, and Impala through the end of the month. Schottenkirk Chevrolet Waukee. WaukeeChevy.com. Here's to everyone who believes in competition and good sportsmanship, who knows it's not about the trophies or the medals, but rather the lessons learned. For those who understand, it's not whether you win or lose, just that you give your best. Jeff, Jeff, you there? So go ahead, place them up. 
Yeah, sorry about that with the uh, levels, but. Uh, well, no, I, I'm controlling the knobs, so just a second here. This is Iowa. Okay, John, go ahead. And here, we don't just dream of a better tomorrow, of a smarter way to do business or live. Two. Of perseverance. And Test, progress. one, two. We inspire it in others. We challenge the conventional, reimagine what it means to be better, and then dare ourselves to make it great. This is Iowa. And here, we don't just dream, we make history. Why do I look for the seal? It's about trust. Whether I'm buying a car, hiring a contractor, finding a tax preparer, or an honest mechanic, the Better Business Bureau seal means this business meets high standards. When I see the seal, I know I'll get what I pay for. No more taking chances and no more worries. And I feel good about supporting local businesses. My life is so much easier knowing I can always trust BBB accredited businesses. It pays to look for the seal. See for yourself at bbb.org backslash Iowa. Best deals of the year at Schottenkirk Ford Indianola. During the Ford Summer Sales Event in Indianola, get 0% for 60 months, plus up to $10,000 off select new 18 Ford F-150 XLT. 0% for 72 months, plus $1,000 on select new 18 Edge Escape and Explorers. You get all of the rebates, incentives, and discounts, plus more for your trade. 0% for 60 months, plus up to $10,000 off select new F-150s won't last. Only at Schottenkirk Ford Indianola. SchottenkirkFord.com. Radio Mark Amadale, joined now by head coach Tom Wilson as uh, Dowling taking on Valley here at Drake. And coach, thanks for joining us. Congratulations on the win last week. I know we didn't get a chance to talk to you on the post game at halftime. We've got that fixed, by the way. But uh, congratulations on the win last week over Waukee. Thank you, Mark. Well, your thoughts on uh, from week one going to week two? It's Dowling Valley week. Always uh, gets the kids' attention. But last week, I'm sure did. And especially after that first series, you take the opening kickoff and you go three and out. And, the Maroons are, you know, trying to go through. They all knew Jason Murray was going to be the lead back, and Waukee did a good job. And then after that, you score in your next uh, two possessions, and your offense really came to life, and your defense was solid for having a young group out there. So a balance on both sides of the ball last week in the win over Waukee, Coach. It was, and I think for us, you know, we get into a feeling out process our, uh, as well, and we're trying to feel out, okay, what is this team going to be? And you know, uh, started a little bit slow, and then and then obviously got the offense going a little bit. And uh, you know, I thought we scuffled there a couple of times, especially uh, in the second half. Uh, defensively, I thought we played pretty well all night. Uh, the big thing for us is we were playing hard and flying around. Uh, gave up a couple pass plays, which you know, against that quarterback, that's probably going to happen. I, I said. Uh, in the pregame that they had some uh, people on the perimeter and, and a good quarterback, and I thought they proved that. But overall, I thought our kids did pretty well. And the big thing is to, as I told them afterwards, is to be the most improved uh, team in the state from week one to week two. So that remains to be seen. Coach, uh, you start out with uh, have, on offensively having uh, two quarterbacks, both named Zach, one named Prey, the other named Waters. Did a tremendous job between them as uh, they completed 13 passes uh, rather 10 passes and 13 attempts pretty pretty efficient and to see both of them on their second on your second and third possessions throw touchdown passes to or throw passes to lead you to touchdowns was pretty impressive for uh, shared quarterback duties we thought both those kids really did a good job and you know it's in, in camp and all our preseason stuff we knew we had two quarterbacks that you know we thought that could do some good things but it's a matter of consistency and I think that remains to be seen. And, uh, you know, we, th we felt both of them deserved game ap action, and, and they continue to. Uh, so we'll see where it takes us. I'm not sure I'll commit to anything, but uh, we like them both, and, and uh, hopefully they can continue to get better. Well, that was all set up because of your offensive line. They seemed like they played outstanding since the uh, opening possession. Uh, up front, Charlie Nag, Alex Curtin, Greg Hagan. And Jesse Alger, along with Ryan Bowles, those were your starters. I know uh, uh, Joe Ryan got in there, and the rest of the offense got going. But they really protected your quarterbacks and gave some running lanes to your tailback, and that's why Jason Murray had the game he had. Well, part of the reason Jason did. Yeah, and Jason ends up uh, doing some things on his own that's pretty good too. And you know, we felt we felt our kids uh, played okay up front. Um, you know, I thought Curtin played uh, very well. He's just a tough, physical 
player and uh, you know I thought he showed that and you know as a unit I think they'd be the first to tell you hey we can get better but as you said in game one they did a pretty good job of opening some things up and uh, we felt okay about the, their uh, their performance and you know I think you can throw Jack Root in there and Andrew Lynch both of them are tight ends that did some good things as well so you know hopefully we can uh, continue to get that uh, group going and they can get better and better as the year progresses. And coach, defensively, your defense not having a whole lot of returning starters, but as you said in the pregame show last week, some kids that played a lot, a lot of experience, well, they got their first shot uh, of being starters and setting the tone, and they certainly did, uh, forcing the shutout in the first half, leading to 21 nothing. Well, they did, and, and really, I thought they were uh, got after their quarterback the entire night, which was certainly fun to see, and uh, pretty much eliminated their run game. I, I don't remember how many yards we gave up, but... You know, when our ones were in there, I thought we were doing some really good things. And so uh, they did a lot of they do a lot of read stuff and, and trying to read our defensive linemen in order to give that quarterback some running lanes. And I thought our kids were very disciplined in their approach to taking care of their job. And finally, before we go to break, Coach, uh, with uh, special teams, uh, you got to be happy with how Carter Baumler did uh, punting the football, kicking off the football. I know he tried a, a field goal, but uh, here's the young man, got him off the baseball team. who was on the football team last year. And then, uh, uh, you know, decided not to go out, but now he's out and uh, pr provided a lot of experience on the kicking side. And your snapper got a big hit later in the game. And I know uh, he's injured this week, but uh, special teams played very well, too. They did some good things. And, and Carter uh, is a weapon, and, and uh, he's, he's only uh, starting to figure out what he can become as a, as a football player and a kicker and a punter. And I think we're going to continue to see him evolve. and. You know, I was attempting a 53-yard field goal there, and and uh, it's because I thought he could make the thing. And then we, you know, we didn't have the connection on the snap, and uh, he tries to run the ball with with Lynch open, by the way, on the on the fire call. But uh, really, I think uh, he's going to continue to get better. Hopefully, our coverages do as well. This is with head coach Tom Wilson here on the pregame show. It's Dowling and Valley tonight here on Iowa Catholic Radio and the Central Iowa Sports Network. We'll take a break and be back here on Iowa Catholic Radio and the Central Iowa Sports Network. Building a strong community doesn't happen overnight. It takes a vision for the future, the ability to turn a challenge into a success, and individuals who inspire new generations of growth. Greater Des Moines has done a lot of growing over the years, and so have we. At Brick Gentry Law, your success is something that we create together. Thank and welcome you back for to the pregame show. Part of your community. Thank you for 50 years. Hi, I'm Chris with Fireplace Superstore. It's August and time for our early end of season sale. Groups that we have too many of are marked way down, like this Sun Villa group, $1,000 off to $32.99. Or this North Cape Avant group, Sofa or Sectional, 20% off. Or this Great Lloyd Flanders Charleston group, $1,000 off to $32.99. The best weather for outdoor furniture is still ahead of us, and we still have Iowa's largest selection. Mr. Hometown. And welcome back to the pregame show here on Iowa Catholic Radio and the Central Iowa Sports Network. Mark Amadil, continue my conversation with head coach Tom Wilson is Dowling. Takes on Valley here at Drake Stadium tonight. Uh, kickoff coming up here on Iowa Catholic Radio and the Central Iowa Sports Network. And Coach Valley Tigers, winners last week uh, in their opener. They defeated Southeast Polk 21 to seven after being down seven to two. Coach Gary Swenson, who won his 350th game last uh, Friday night, came up with a win and both teams undefeated. And it just seems like a, this rivalry, Dowling and Valley, I've looked back the last uh, few years, it's either week two, week three, sometimes week four, never district. Uh, uh, comrades, but uh, this week, this year it's week two when they redistribute. It'll be that way next year. So you get the Tigers right off the bat. And uh, what do you know about Valley and and how you know what how concerned are you about them? Because they got some players. They always do. And they had a big rally in that second half against a very fine Southeast Polk team. Yeah, it's uh, it's a typical Gary Swenson team. I mean, they're going to be fast. They're going to be physical. And, and Coach Rebar will have their defense ready to go. So uh, they're a good football team. And you know, you asked uh, how concerned. Well, you know, it really didn't matter the records or when you play or who's supposed to win because uh, a lot of times it doesn't turn out that way. So that's why they play the game, and, and uh, it should be uh, it should be a good football game tonight. Valley led by quarterback Bolin Barty. He had uh, 
pretty decent numbers last week, eight out of 15 for 83 yards and a touchdown of 21 yards. And, uh, you know, you look at the, the Tigers, they like to grind it out. They like to possess the ball a lot. Uh, Trey Fugate and Creighton Mitchell, their two leading ball carriers, Bo, Bo Lombardi can show that he can run too. So they give you that run pass option uh, variance as does Dowling. Yeah, they do. And, and Fugate is, has tremendous speed. Uh, Mitchell has good speed as well. Pretty versatile player because they'll use him as a wide receiver as well. And, you know, honestly, uh, Johnson and New, uh, their receivers are certainly threats as well. So, uh, and we like their fullback, but and plus they have a division one offensive lineman. So uh, they've certainly got some weapons on offense. We're gonna have to do a great, great job. And, and hopefully we can try to make them one dimensional. If they get that run game going, uh, they do a great job with play action. Defensively, Logan Crossman and Avery Bonacci are their leading tacklers last week against Southeast Polk. Jake McCudden. So, you know, they're usually linebackers are pretty good, and so are their uh, corners. But uh, anything specifically on defense that you're going to like to attack on uh, against the Valley defense tonight, Coach? Well, you're right. You know, historically, they do a great job uh, with that defense, and I think their safeties will get along, uh, involved in the run game like they tried to last year. And if you remember right, we were, you know, beaten. Uh, with Sam Angoli over the top, we were able to get a couple of scores, and you know Sam Angoli graduated, so we'll have to wait and see, you know what our what our opportunities are and options are that way. But you know we have to be able to run the football first and foremost, and then and then uh, hopefully we can uh, get our play action going. Coach, back to the uh, Dowling defense. Last week he came up with a couple turnovers, uh, especially two uh, interceptions by the Keel brothers, and uh, Jack and Mike came up with interceptions in the game. Tigers had the same thing, a couple of interceptions, and they forced two turnovers. And in this kind of game, and we don't know about the weather conditions on uh, uh, tonight, but uh, obviously in a wet field, anything can happen. But possessing the ball has got to be number one in both you and Coach Swenson's playbook. Well, there's no question. Possession and, and uh, making sure you play great special teams so you can get uh, field position. So those will be critical as, as both of us continue to try to, to get our offenses going. Coach, before I let you go, your thoughts on last week. Who are the players that maybe rose to the top, maybe didn't get their names in the paper uh, with stat-wise and that? Who are some of the kids in Dowling and on either side of the ball that uh, stood out to you, you and your coaching staff? You know, I, I mentioned Curtin earlier, and I thought Charlie Nank uh, played very well as, as well. And I'd also mentioned Rude, who made his uh, first start. So um, really on the offensive side, Drew Snedeker also played very well, who is our fullback. Uh, on the defensive side, you mentioned uh, Michael Keo, which who, who made his first start. Um, he's uh, he's shown us a lot in, in our preseason stuff. And Owen Schultz is a, is a good corner. I thought, you know, Connor Jackman did some good things, and those guys are still kind of coming into their own a little bit. And and Hummel uh, starting his first game on defense. He was an offensive player uh, last year and thought he did some good things. And you know, our, our uh, defensive linemen are just very workmanlike, and you're not going to see an all-star, but you're going to see a lot of good Iowa high school football players on that D-line. Well, Coach, best of luck tonight. It's hard to beat game one, hard to believe game one. Dowling with just three penalties, you got to be proud of that, and that'll hopefully carry over your keys tonight's uh, game with Valley. Well, as you mentioned, you know, we have to be able to run the ball and stop their run, and, and uh, you know, you've got to eliminate big plays, but... You know, as I usually say, it comes down to the line of scrimmage and, and uh, how you're going to play on special teams. And in any big game, that's the case, and uh, this will be no different. Coach Wilson, look forward to talking to you at halftime and on the postgame show. Best of luck against the Tigers tonight, and uh, congratulations on the win last week. All right, thank you, Mark. Head coach Tom Wilson has been my guest during the pregame show. It's Dowling and Valley here at Drake Stadium. Coming up, we'll have more from Drake Stadium as Matt Maindring and John Chido join me for the pregame show as it continues here on Iowa Catholic Radio and the Central Iowa Sports Network. Miss your hometown clothing store, the one that had it all, everything to get the work done all in one place? g &L Clothing is your hometown Iowa store. Stop in and see us, or we're only a click or phone call away. Family owned for nearly a century, g &L Clothing. 1801 Ingersoll, Des Moines. Moms typically get to make a majority of the healthcare decisions for their family. That can be a lot of pressure, but not for me, because I know the choice is ours. Johnny, can from you hear me? medical tests like MRIs, X-rays, CAT scans, and of course mammograms, ask your doctor to refer you to Iowa Radiology. They work around our hectic schedules. They're the best at what they do. And okay, they're so no great problem. with my family. They truly care, and it shows. 
Visit iowaradiology.com or call to schedule an appointment. Iowa Radiology, our focus is your good health. <laughs> And welcome back to Drake Stadium. Mark Amadale, Matt Maindring, and John Chido as we get set for Dowling and Valley. A little bit of a delay due to some weather moving through central Iowa. We had a little lightning delay at about uh, 6.30, so it pushes the start time back to what we're talking now about 7.30 uh, here on Iowa Catholic Radio and from Drake Stadium. We're also joined by the folks at the Central Iowa Sports Network, CISN.TV. They're webcasting tonight's game, and we're providing the audio. So call that a simulcast there, Mr. Maindring. Is that what that is? It is. We try to do on that. <laughs> well, I'm good on radio. You're, you're yeah. doing a fine, you did a fine job on that opening segment. I think the, the camera people are still recovering from that. Yeah. But uh, John Chido, he's on our sideline. And through the uh, Dowling uh, sideline, there is uh, he's always talking to the official. He's talking to Chuck Britton, one of the uh, uh, veteran officials here in the state of Iowa. And I think he's letting you know where everybody's at up here. He's giving out directions down there. Well, the sun's coming out. It looks like it's going to be a nice night for football here. A little bit of a breeze, and that, you know, it, but it doesn't look like it's going to be a factor in the game, and uh, away we go. Well, um, we hope not, and uh, well, let's take a look at uh, tonight's starting lineups. As we have about seven minutes until kickoff, and not a bad crowd here. A lot of tailgaters that kind of got rained on as the, the front moved through uh, tonight. But uh, let's take a look at the starting lineups, first of all, for Dowling Catholic. They are the home team. They'll be wearing their Maroon uniforms with uh, white pants, Valley, and they're all white uniforms tonight. The Maroons are coached by head coach Tom Wilson in his 14th year, 142 wins and 87 and, and, and 21 losses and 87% winning percentage. And the Maroons will start at quarterback. We'll see two quarterbacks, Zach Waters and Zach Prey, both start at uh, quarterback. Zach Waters, number four, Zach Prey, number 14. Both are seniors, and they'll share the duties tonight. Tailback for the Maroons is Jason Murray. Uh, Jason, a 5'980 pound senior. And uh, wide receivers will see Edward Thompson, number eight, a 5'965 pound senior, along with Colin Cook, number five, a 5'11185 pound senior. And the other split in is Jack Lyman, a 6'185 uh, pound uh, senior. He'll wear number 13. So the receivers are Cook, Thompson, and Lyman. And uh, Drew Snedeker, Matt, we heard from him earlier in the pregame show from Coach Wilson. He and Levi Hummel, Levi was at blocking back last year, maybe got one carry the whole season. Well, yeah. Drew Snedeker has taken up that role at fullback for the Maroons. Yeah, he did a nice job last week. He, he keyed two touchdown runs by kicking out the defensive end and getting a creating an alley for Jason to run through and just had a nice night on the on the football field. His first his first start as a Maroon as well. And up front is where it happens for the Maroons. Left tackle to right tackle, Charlie Nank, Alex Curtin. Uh, on the left side, Greg Hagan, the center, Jesse Alger at right guard, and Ryan Bowles, the right tackle. And Bowles at 285, Alger at uh, 340, and Hagan at 240. That's a big offensive line. Some colleges would like to have that tomorrow. Yeah, that, that line that line can hide Jason Murray behind him. And, and <laughs> you know, they got off to kind of a slow start last week. Actually, Waukee did a pretty good job up front against them to start the game. Uh, as the night wore, wore on, and I think we're going to see a lot of that this year, that offensive front's going to wear people down. You know, you're going to have people shooting the gaps and trying to create uh, mismatches for us, but one-on-one, -on -one, there's going to be nobody that can stand up to our line toe-to-toe -to -toe and, and manage them. Can't forget the tight ends. That's Jack Rude, who got his first start last week for the Maroons, and Andrew Lynch, a sophomore, and Rude, the senior, starting at tight end, and that's kind of the unknown factor there when you go double tights. There's a reason why both of them are in there for one way, one way or the other, especially with the run pass option. Yeah, they're gonna they they create situations for you. They create matchups, and usually when you're going to those situations, you're seeing how the defense is going to react, and then create a matchup for you later in the game that you can take advantage of. All right, let's take a look at the Valley offensive starters tonight. The quarterback is Bo Lombardi. He's a six-three senior. He was veteran of this contest. He played last year, was a starter, and. Uh, he starts for the uh, Tigers. At running back, we'll see two of them. Trey Fugate, 5'8", senior, and uh, Creighton Mitchell, a 5'8", junior, start for the Tigers at a tailback. The wide receivers for Valley are Ryan New, who's a veteran from last year. He was like the third or fourth leading receiver for the Tigers. He'll wear number two, and he's a junior. J.J. Gass, number, a senior at number 13, is the other receiver. And uh, we'll also see Jack Johnson, who caught the touchdown pass, and he looks like an excellent receiver. Valley's been known to have those, and they've got one, and Johnson was the one last week against uh, Southeast Polk, Matt. Yeah, they, they got some guys that can stretch the field, and if they can stretch the field and keep us our coverage soft and making us play back, then we can't commit to the run, and that's going to give room. You know, the one thing about Lombardi is he's a big kid. 
And if you know they did run a couple quarterback draws with him last week, he's gonna. You can't take him down by with one man. So it's gonna take a couple of them to get there. So he's something you have to keep an eye on as well as a runner. And the Valley tight end is Colby Christensen, a six-seven junior. Boy, what a target that is at 225. And we'll go through the. Uh, the Offensive line for Valley. The left tackle is Jake Rensberg. He's the All-Stater who's signed to play at Iowa State. 6'6", 300 pounds at left tackle, number 75. Uh, Mason Ayers is the left guard, uh, 6'1", junior at 265. The center is Zach Shaner, 6'1", junior at 210. The right guard is Carter Lawrence for Valley, a uh, 6'2", junior, 255-pounder, wearing number 74. And the right tackle for the uh, Tigers is Logan Mueller. Uh, 6'3", junior at 320, wearing number 79. So that's starting offensive lineups for both teams. We'll catch the defensive lineups as the game progresses. But we're going to take a break here in the pregame show. When we come back, we will have the opening kickoff. They may have the coin toss, and we'll hopefully get a sideline report from on our Shield sideline report tonight from John Chido as uh, we start at about 7.30 here, a little late because of the weather. Hope you join us for the kickoff coming up here on Iowa Catholic Radio and the Central Iowa Sports Network. Mark Amadale, Matt Mandering, and John Chido from Drake Stadium kickoff coming up here on Iowa Catholic Radio and the Central Iowa Sports Network. The value of staying active cannot Johnny, be can you hear me at all? Lives or our young athletes. However, high intensity workouts come you. with the risk of injury. If you or your child have sustained a sports injury, select physical therapy in conjunction with Iowa or We can hear you, John. with two convenient walk-in locations. From diagnosis through recovery you'll be put directly into the hands of experts who will evaluate and treat your sports-related injury. Call us today for an evaluation. Keep talking. You might not always know what the day will bring, but some things are certain. Right. He's going to have to come back up here. I think your mic's out of sync. That's because yeah, it, it's out of sync. Sorry. You got nothing. Say it again, John. Say something again, Johnny. Say something in your mic. Is the light on? Nothing. Still got nothing. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we are pleased to have our honorary captains for tonight's game, representing the United States Marine Corps, Staff Sergeant King. And Sergeant Soaps, who will execute tonight's coin toss as our special guest of honor. Our officials tonight, Trent Britton, Mike Stewart, Jack Jasper. And welcome back to Drake Stadium as we get set for kickoff. Dowling and Valley tonight here on Iowa Catholic Radio. The captain's going out on the field at this time to uh, get the ceremonial to coin toss. And they'll be out there with the uh, Armed Forces folks as this game is being broadcast on the Armed Forces Radio Network. And uh, we appreciate all the, f the work they do protecting our country all over the United States. And uh, I think this is about the fifth straight year, man. I'm trying to think back when Armed Forces Radio picked up the feed, whether it be from Mediacom, which is lo broadcasting locally, and that'll be replayed throughout the week here on Mediacom in Des Moines or on one of the other uh, stations. That is quite an honor to have this game uh, across the nation and across the United States. It really is special, and, you know, and, and I'm sure some of these kids have relatives out there serving right now, and so we, we thank them for their service. We had some of the, some of the um, service men and women were in our building today and uh, had a little competition at lunch on how many pull-ups somebody could do. I so did not partake. I was going to say, who were the uh, faculty participants? <laughs> I don't think there was any faculty participants. <laughs> I know Coach Wilson's daughter did a heck of a job. She was impressive out there. They had a number of kids. It's a good challenge. I think they were doing some live feeds back and forth between our cafeteria and Valley's cafeteria, sure. uh, creating a little bit of hype for tonight. So just kind of good fun to get other kids involved. Well, that's quite an honor, and it's good to have that being partaked in our, uh, in our school. And... Uh, what a rivalry. Dowling and Valley, a lot of these kids know each other. They play tournament ball with each other, club ball growing up, and the parents know each other. And I know there are a few of them out there tailgating before they 
they got rained on, and uh, we had the ceremonial to uh, coin toss. So about ready for kickoff. And folks who joined us late, the game did start. It is starting later, right at 7.30, due to the weather we had go through right about 6 o'clock, setting up in here, and all of a sudden lightning. And that's 30 minutes every time there's a lightning strike. And uh, we had that happen. So along with Matt Maynard, Mark Amadale, John Chido, and now we're going to have our national anthem uh, being played uh, by the Dowling uh, Band here at Drake Stadium. Our PA announcer, you'll hear him tonight, is Denny O'Grady. And uh, we will go to the national anthem uh, right here before tonight's Dowling Valley game. As we gather for the game this evening, help us to feel your presence with us. We ask your blessing on both teams, the players, coaches, officials, and fans. Help us to appreciate the opportunities you give us that we might be able to give you greater glory. Help us also to keep perspective and to rededicate ourselves to fair play and good sportsmanship. We pray in the name of Jesus our Lord, Amen. Amen. Remain standing for the playing of our national anthem. Welcome back to Drake Stadium, playing of our national anthem here at uh, Drake Stadium. Because of the weather, uh, we are having issues with the, uh, obviously the band cannot play because of the weather. And we're having trouble with our sideline mic right now. So we'll try to get, do a test with John. Go ahead. Mark. You are fine. Excellent. <laughs> He's back on. Get my steps in. He's going to get his steps in. We have day. an elevator here at Drake Stadium, John. Uh, that's a good idea. All right. <laughs> the team's both on the field. Yeah, the weather causes havoc, especially when they have that lightning in it. And uh, don't blame the band for not playing tonight. But, hey, it's going to clear off. Not a bad crowd. Drake has their home opener here tomorrow tomorrow night. A lot of uh, teams opening up uh, with their college and high school game. And, of course, Matt, uh, we were going to have the, the president of Dowling Catholic High School, Dr. Uh, Dan Ryan, on at halftime. So we invite our fans and our listeners to uh, uh, and our viewers to uh, keep in mind we will have Dr. Dan on at halftime. And uh, i got a few questions I'm going to ask. If you want to write a few down, you can. Also, uh, Matt, to get uh, the fine president uh, involved. So that's what he gave me. He gave me enough for about three minutes. It's a 10-minute segment. We, we, we share a lot of time together during the day. <laughs> it's, been a, it's been a good partnership mm -hmm. since he's taken over for uh, Dr. Deegan. It's been a lot of fun and, and uh, to watch things continue to grow and prosper. I want to thank Bozen the Floors. They're our Red Zone sponsor. Whatever your message may be, say more with Bozen. I also want to thank Ashworth Vision. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ashworth Vision Clinic committed to providing a complete eye exam to make sure your family is seeing and feeling their best. Located at 60th and Ashworth Road in West Des Moines. I also want to thank Construction Professionals here on Iowa Catholic Radio. It's a family business built on a strong foundation. 515-208-5721. Mark Amadale, Matt Maindring, John Chido has made his way back down to the field. We'll get an update from him as, uh, as soon as he gets off the elevator. As you can see on the... Uh, 
you're watching the game and you're listening, Valley will kick off as they defer. They will defend the south end zone here at Drake Stadium when they're all white uniforms with the V on their helmet. Dowling in their home maroon uniforms, white pants, white numbers, and white helmets. And they will go defending the north end zone here as we get set for week two, Matt Maindring of the high school football season. And now the Valley kicker having trouble with lining or teeing up the uh, the football due to I'm sure the wind that has all of a sudden become gusty with these storms look at that flag and south end zone it is coming yeah and the wind is all of a sudden picked up going to reset the clock a second and now we're ready we got Ed Thompson back Edward Thompson back for us and uh, Jason Murray ready to return this young man kicking off for Valley has the leg to get it there Cole Peterson the yeah, Cole yeah. Peterson can reach the end zone he had a uh, I think uh, several touchbacks last week, uh, three touchbacks and five attempts to have the wind at his back, and it's a high kick, and it's angling towards the far side, and it goes out of bounds inside the five-yard line. So Dowling will have first and ten with their offense on their own 35-yard line. And let's introduce the Valley defense up front, number 90 on the left defensive end, Nick Botoff, uh, Butoff, rather. C.J. Stillman, the defensive tackle, number 52, along with Jacob McCudden and Logan Crosman. That's up front for Valley. Linebackers are Avery Bonacci and Carson, uh, Carson Shelton and uh, Bracken Cobb. And now they'll put the ball on the left hash, and Dowling goes left to right, defending the north end zone. Part of Dowling's offense is out there, and now they just leave the linemen by themselves. So play clock has not uh, been started and now our referee Chuck Britton does start it yep, we'll get our personnel grouping out there and away we go that kick out of bounds that's a that gives us a big advantage starting off giving good field position to start this quarter no question about that and now on first down Dowling with the football and back to throw on his first uh, pass of the game he fires a ball out and the ball is tipped and incomplete as he tried to hit his uh, tight end and that was a uh, quarterback Zach Waters who rolled to his left and he was looking for his receiver that time who uh, was well covered. That was Jack Lyman. Yeah, he ran a little bootleg action there with Waters thrown back across his body. Got a flag on the play. We have an ineligible uh, man downfield. We had someone on the offensive line get a little too far down past the line of scrimmage. Well, the Bruins had three penalties last week in their win over Waukee, 48-14. to 14, and Tonight they have a penalty on the first play of the game, and that doesn't go over well, I'm sure, with the coaching staff. So it'll bring up second down for the Maroons. And they'll move the ball back to it's like the 30-yard line. Chuck Britton, our official. Yep, and that, that is not a loss of down, so that would it's still going to be first and 15 for us. So, so the Maroons now will start. First and 15, as you mentioned, Coach, back at their own 30-yard line. Read option handoff goes to Jason Murray, and he goes right up the gut over center, Greg Hagan, and he follows his blockers up to the 35-yard line, which was the original line of scrimmage. Gain of five. Gain of five, got the yardage back at second and 10 now, and, and uh, Greg did a good job up front of moving bodies there and created a little crease for Jason to shoot straight up the middle. So second down now and 10 for the Maroons, ball on their own. 35-yard line, handoff goes to Murray, pops out, bounces outside the numbers, and he's angling towards the far, far sideline, excuse me, and he's near a first down. He'd be shy of the first down at the 44, and he'll pick up nine yards. Yeah, great job by Jason there. He really bounced that play out to the outside, was meant to go inside the tackle, bounce it to the edge, and, and raced it to the corner. It looks like John Shaner for the Tigers made the tackle on him out of bounds, creates a third and short. So Murray, two, two carries for... 14 yards and now out of the shotgun. Here's quarterback Zach Waters rolls to his left trying to pick up the short yardage angling towards the far sideline. The Tigers over there. The Valley team doesn't think he got it. And he's right down at the 45 yard line. Yeah, Jane Shaner again and Carson Shelton for the Tigers got out there and made the stop on that play. Uh, Zach couldn't quite get enough yardage there as he went out of bounds. Looks like one yard short. So bring up fourth down and one for Dowling. The ball on the 44-yard line, no gain in the play that time by uh, Waters, and Dowling looking to the uh, sideline, and the first play big. clock going down to 15, and yeah. the Maroons are going to bring an extra tight end and go for yeah. it here, Matt. First big decision of the ball game here. That gets the crowd on its feet. Fourth and one, Dowling on their own 30, 
on their own 44-yard line. They give up the middle and diving towards the marker, and he stood up right at the line of scrimmage, and he may have gotten the first down depending yeah. on what the line judge gives him. Well, where this guy is standing on this side, he got the first down. I, I believe he got it. We got the push up front, and Jason squirted ahead and got the first down. We got injured Dowling player Jack, Jack Rude, the tight end, who came in on the play, is shaken up. and Looks like an ankle. And he is down. And first down Dowling as Murray picked up the yard and just barely right at the 45 yard line. So that Valley defensive line, we talked about it earlier. The leading tackler last week was uh, number 88, Logan Crossman. He had eight tackles against Southeast Polk. And this is the Valley team that uh, forced three turnovers in the contest. And uh, now with Root on the injured for the Maroons, the Dowling training staff out there right now, Matt. Yeah, he must have got rolled up underneath that pile. We got a good push from the offensive line. Valley did a great job of um, stuffing it up there up front. It doesn't look like they're going to measure and give us the first down. They're going to help Jack off here. Okay, let's go down to the Dowling sideline, and John Scheidel, give us your first report on the Shield sideline report. Mark, can you hear me okay? I sure can. Okay, great. Uh, Jason Murray uh, got him back into field position with uh, two nice runs. And then that uh, last run there, his uh, forward progress allowed him to get the first down. He's getting ready to start their second series on offense here. Yeah, it certainly is. And we've got to keep an eye on that injury with Root. He's coming out. Injured right leg, it looks like, uh, Matt and uh, John. So we'll keep an eye on that. Nonetheless, it's first down Dowling at their own 45-yard line. We want to thank Dental Associates along with Kemen and Mercy Medical for supporting our broadcast here on Iowa Catholic Radio. And, of course, our sideline report tonight sponsored by Shields as a John Chido on the Dowling sideline. And now Chuck Britton says we're underway, ready to go. Coach Wilson showed a lot of confidence there, A, in his offensive line and B, in his defense. You know, you go for it on the, your own 45, 44-yard line. Oh, now we're going to get a penalty for too many guys in the field. Yeah, an extra lineman or extra uh, Drew Snedeker was the fullback in there, and Dowling had the extra receiver, and Snedeker is a fullback. So a legal substitution on the Maroons. You might have heard Chuck Britton, our referee, mentioning that. So Dowling will be penalized. That's a second penalty in this opening drive for Dowling. No score. Dowling and Valley. Mark Amadale, along with Matt Maindring here in the press box. John Chido down on the sidelines. And we're with the Central Iowa uh, CISN crew, along with Iowa Catholic Radio. Now here's a handoff, and this is Murray left side. He's trying to turn the corner, and he can't do it. Turned the corner and got stopped right at the 40-yard line. What a job by the Valley defense that time. Yeah. No gain on the play. Yeah, Valley defense swarmed to their, to their right side, our left, and really stepped that play up. Didn't give Jason any chance to bounce that outside or any cutback lanes either. So outstanding job by their defense. So to bring up second down and 10 for the Maroons. Murray, no gain on the play. It'll be second and 15. Excuse me, with the loss of the, uh, rather the penalty. It is second 15. Thanks, Matt. Back to throw. His quarterback, Waters, fires the ball out. The pass is caught by Jack Lyman, but he is wrestled down once he caught it. And Valley is not having any of that tonight. They've kept an eye on Lyman thus far. Yeah, Carson Shelton for the Tigers there playing his lineback position was on that play right away. A no gain on the play. Lyman with the catch. It goes for no gain. And it'll bring up third down for Dowling, third and 15. So the Maroons go for it on fourth and one, get the first down, and they go backwards via the penalty. And... Uh, the Valley defense. Two receivers left, two to the right for Dowling. The Maroons go left to right towards the north rather than south end zone. And back to throw is Waters, fires the ball out, and it's caught. First down Dowling, that's Colin Cook, who came up with a big third down catch a few times last week. And number five, Cook with the catch into Valley territory, Matt. Outstanding timing on that play. Colin took one step and looked and the ball was there. He made his cut and the ball was right in the mark and we're hustling up the line of scrimmage for the next snap. First down, 18-yard gain for Cook. Give to uh, Murray, and Jason finds a little hole still on his feet. He's all the way down to the Tiger 35-yard line, so a seven-yard gain for Jason Murray to bring up second and three for the Maroons. Again, Carson Shelton on the bottom of that play, and that was a great run and great blocking up front. Those were eight hard-earned yards there, seven hard-earned yards by Jason. Dowling's wanting to go quick here, and got Waters in, pistol formation, and the give is to Murray, and he's stacked up, boy, right at the point of attack as uh, Jesse Alger was right in there trying to block, and his man got right by him and stuffed uh, Murray for no gain on the play. May have lost the yard back to the 37-yard line, loss of two. Yeah, they Valley got really aggressive on that play, and the key tipped him off, and either it's, it's a run blitz, or but they shot the gaps early on that one and stuffed that in the backfield. All right, I'll bring up for the Maroons. 
third down and five from the Valley 37. Three receivers to the right of the formation for Dowling, one to the left, and the quarterback is Zach Waters on the opening drive tonight. Waters, play action fake, pumps once, fires to the left side, the pass is incomplete. They try to hit Lyman on the play, and on the Valley sideline, a little square out to the left, Lyman couldn't catch up with the ball, and it'll bring up fourth down for Dowling, fourth and five from the Tiger 37 on the Maroons opening drive. Yeah, I mean, it's gonna be interesting to see what Coach does here. This one, a little bit lengthier. He's not gonna bring Baumler out for the extra, or for the field goal. He is gonna punt this one. He brings Baumler out, but he's gonna probably try to pooch kick it. Yeah. Tigers with two players back deep. We'll play right about little, the 10 yard line, man. Yeah, play a little field position here. Right, Carter Baumler will punt it away. He stands just inside his 50 yard line. Good snap, Bomber gets it away. It's a high, spirally kick, angling into the end zone right at the referee, and it bounces at the one, oh. saved, and then goes in the end zone, touchback. Good hustle that time by the Maroons. They couldn't get it to uh, stay in out of the end zone. It'll be first and 10 Valley from the 20-yard line. Who yeah, was down there? Ryan, Ryan Adam had that. He he was in the end zone, tried to tip it back in, and the wet ball coming off the, coming off the turf after the bounce and it slipped and he couldn't get it back into the field to play. Well, the Maroons had the ball almost five minutes on the opening drive of the uh, first quarter. No score, Dowling and Valley here on Iowa Catholic Radio and the Central Iowa Sports Network. Seven minutes, 11 minutes remaining, seven minutes, 11 seconds remaining. First down Valley at their own 20 yard line and their quarterback is Bo Lombardi, 6'3", 230 pound senior and the handoff and the first man through and that's Trey Fugate, can't get the original hole and I Battery runs, uh, runs reverse field, uh, Matt. <laughs> he gets outside right in and where he's stuffed maybe for a gain of one. Yeah, it looked like Connor Krigshauser and uh, uh, Keo on the bottom of that one it did a good job of staying home. Connor on that backside did a good job of staying home because the play was meant to go to the left, and they bounced it back to the right, and he was there to stuff it up. All right, second down, nine Valley on their own 21-yard line. They go right to left, south to north here at Drake Stadium as the rain has held off, and they give... Once again is to the tailback Fugate. He's stuffed right at the point of attack and it'll bring up third down and nine for Valley. I think Valley probably looked at our defensive line and says they have a, and are thinking they have a size advantage with their offensive line compared to our defensive line. And, uh, but they're quick up front, you know, and our, our guys are and, and did a real good job there of stuffing that play up. All right, it'll bring up third and long for the Valley Tigers as they take their Signals from their sideline. They do not huddle, but as most teams are not doing these days, they just get signals brought in, and Tigers with three receivers left. One to the right. Here is Lombardi back to throw. Rolls to his left. Fires the ball downfield. The pass is incomplete as the wide receiver on the near side for Valley was Jack Johnson, who caught the touchdown pass for the Tigers, and he was well defended by the Maroons. Yes, and uh, that was um, as I, I got to get the name in my head here, Quentin Wellmaker. Quinn Wellmaker was on the defensive coverage there. A lot of hand fighting going on moving yes, down was. the field. And the one thing I noticed, I did watch a little tape this week, but they like to roll him out to his left, which is counterintuitive with a right-handed quarterback. It is. And so uh, they like to roll Lombardi out to his left. I think that's because the big guy's on the left side of the line of scrimmage there, Remsfield. All right, Cole Peterson will punt it from his own 10-yard line, high end over end kick, and almost goes over the head and finally fielded and brought down on his own. <laughs> <laughs> is a Dowling punt returner, and that is Matt Stilwell, who uh, misjudged that punt, went over his head. He uh, held on there and, and made a good adjustment and got the ball with his hands. He didn't let it get into his body, but it, the ball did carry. The wind, as you said earlier, the wind is whipping out there, and if you look at the goal posts on the north side or on the uh, south side of the field, the flags aren't moving. Goal posts on the north side, we got a lot of wind, and that's the thing about this bowl. Five minutes, 42 seconds remaining here in the first quarter and Dowling and Valley scoreless on a night that started out with a little rain shower lightning and now we've cleared off and Maroons with the first down from their own 31 yard line and quarterback remains Zach Waters and they give it right up the gut to uh, Jason Murray he picks up the first down in a slow developing play that play went right over left guard left tackle and I tell you what Jason let his offensive line yeah. do the work and he just followed him Alex Curtin did a heck of a job right there he just kept turning his legs moving the defensive pile from the for the Tigers and Jason just sat right in his back pocket and, and got 10, 10 yards I'll give him 11 up to the 42 11. yard line first and 10 Dowling 
As Maroons have a man in motion, play action fake. Waters back to throw, rolls to his right, fires the ball downfield, and the pass is nearly tipped away and may have uh, been tipped away out of bounds. Joe Shaner closing in for Valley, number 22. Intended receiver was Edward Thompson, number eight for the Dowling Maroons. Yeah, they had two guys in coverage there that did an uh, Bracken Cobb and uh, Grant Clark in coverage. Or, um, yes, Grant Clark, Jane Shaner again, John Shaner in coverage there for the Tigers and made the plays. All right, that'll bring up second down and 10 for Dowling. Line of scrimmage is the Valley for Dowling 42, and a give is to Murray. Right up the gut he goes, and he's hitting, chopped down right at the 47-yard line. He'll pick up five, and it'll bring up third and five for the Maroons. Jason did a good job again right up the middle. It seems that spot we want to keep we want to keep pushing right up there. Drew Jurak for the Tigers makes the play coming up from his defensive back position to get Jason and cut him down. But Jason's really running hard right now. And he's running between the Dowling offensive line, yeah. right between the tackles. Curtin, Hagen, Algier, along with Bowles and Nang. Nang and Bowles, the two tackles. And now here is third and five for the Maroons. And the quarterback is Zach Waters. Back to throw he goes. Looks left. Ball is tipped the line of scrimmage incomplete. The intended receiver once again was Jack Lyman over on the left side of the formation. And that pass is incomplete. And it'll bring up fourth and five for Dowling. Yeah, I couldn't tell if it was tipped or if it slipped out of his hand when he let go of it. It just came out a little awkward and uh, um, just rushed it a little bit. And now it's fourth and five, and we're fourth and four. We're going to punt. Matt Stillwell was the uh, intended receiver. He and Jack Lyman kind of share that position. And Bruins back to punt. And that'll be Carter Baumler, who was, had four punts last week for 40 yards. Low snap. Baumler picks it up. And a high end over end kick and a fair catch signal for by Valley right about the 14 yard line. Nicely done that time by Ryan New. It'll be, it'll be Valley Tiger football, first and 10 from their own 15 yard line with 428 remaining here in the first quarter. No score, Dowling and Valley here on Iowa Catholic Radio. Mark Amadale, Matt Mainring up here in the press box. Let's go down to John Chido on the Dowling sideline. Johnny, take it away. Well, it's a little tough go there on third down, second down. It seems like Jason Murray gets uh, some nice, uh, a nice carry for a good yardage, and then we kind of stall out there a little bit, either with a penalty or a rush pass. But uh, it's been a stalemate so far, just like we uh, predicted in pregame, Mark. Yeah, it certainly is, John. It's a typical Dowling Valley game. Both coach and staff kind of feeling each other out, kind of getting the lay of the land. First and 10, Valley. The line of scrimmage is the Tiger 15-yard line. Lombardi back to throw. Straight back in the park. It now flush, rolls to his right, fires the ball out, and it's caught. First down, Tigers across 35, up near the 38-yard line. Nice little play that time by the uh, Valley Tigers as J.J. Gass was the receiver on the play, number 13. Yeah, it looks like Owen Schultz on the stop there, and Ryan Adam, they, they run that play where they run the fullback out, and they had two guys actually in the, in the pass route there that were open, and Bo Lombardi did a, or did a great job of keeping his um, – Feet moving and rolling out and finding the guy. 22-yard reception, first down Valley from their own 37-yard line. Bo Lombardi at quarterback, 6'3", 230-pound senior. One back in the backfield, and he'll give it to him. And hopping right, hopping the pile is Trey Fugate. And he's hitting stuff right at the 39-yard uh, line for a gain of two. And both teams working that offensive line, Matt. They're trying to go right between the tackles, and Fugate has been the leading carrier for uh, Valley. Yeah, that was an outstanding hit by Levi Hummel. He came in there and stuck him right it, it, just as he jumped jumped over the uh, line of scrimmage and, and had a nice play. It was. Two-yard gain for Fugate after the tackle by Hummel, and it'll bring up second down now for the Tigers. Second and eight on their own 39. Offset eye formation, and Lombardi under center. Now the Left tackle jumps for the Valley Tigers, and that's the All-Stater going to Iowa State. Jack, Jake Remsburg, uh, snap count ahead, and that'll move the Tigers back five yards. As mentioned the Dowling defense, we didn't introduce them. We introduced both teams' offenses. Jack Schultz, the left tackle. Nose guard is Nate Collins, and Connor Kriegshauser is the other defensive lineman. The, the uh, linebackers are Drew Peterson, Levi Hummel, Jack Keel, and Michael Keel. Cornerbacks are Quentin Wellmaker and Owen Schultz. And the safety, the free safety is Ryan Adam. All right, Valley now with a second and 13. And the handoff goes right up the gut, and that is Trey Fugate over right tackled. He may go. Fugate down the far sideline from his own 34-yard line. He may go in, and he will. Touchdown, Valley. Trey Fugate on a huge run that time. He got loose on the right side and used his offensive line, got in the Dowling secondary and scores for the Tigers. 
Yeah, he found an opening in there. At first, it looked like we had it stopped up for a little bit. He had a little sidestep in there and then headed for the sideline, and he's got a burst. He certainly did, and uh, touchdown Valley, 66 yards on the uh, touchdown for Trey Fugate. Last week, he had 42 yards of rushing, and he picked up 66 there in one gallop. Extra point now by Cole Peterson for the Tigers, and the ball is up, and it is good. So Valley strikes first. They lead Dowling 7 to nothing. We'll take a break here on the Central Iowa Sports Network and Iowa Catholic Radio. It's Valley 7 and the Dowling Maroons nothing here on Iowa Catholic Radio from Drake Stadium. Month at Schottenkirk Chevrolet Waukee. Up to $10,000 off select new 18 Silverado 1500s. Includes the LTZs and High Countries. New 18 Silverado Double Cab LT. $275 per month. Only $19.99 though at signing. Front Month in Waukee. New 18 Equinox LT. $229 per month. Only $19.99 though at signing. New 18 Cruise. $179 per month. Only $19.99 though at signing. Plus 20% off new Spark, Sonic, and Impala. Through the end of the month. Schottenkirk Chevrolet Waukee. WaukeeChevy.com. Moms typically get to make a majority of the healthcare decisions for their family. That can be a lot of pressure, but not for me, because I know the choice is ours. For medical tests like MRIs, x-rays, CAT scans, and of course mammograms, ask your doctor to refer you to Iowa Radiology. They work around our hectic schedules. They're the best at what they do, and they're so great with my family. They truly care, and it shows. Visit iowaradiology.com or call to schedule an appointment. Iowa Radiology, our focus is your good health. And welcome back to Drake Stadium. Mark Amadil and uh, Matt Maindring here as Valley now leads Dowling by the score of 7 0. Tigers go four plays, 85 yards. And Trey Fugate on a 66 yard run over the right side of his offensive line scores for Valley. Extra point good. And the Tigers with the lead here in the first quarter, Matt. Yeah, you know, you're always looking for it as a coach now. How are your kids going to respond? And that's the first time, you know, it's one of the things about these games early in the year like this. How do your kids respond to some adversity? And, and uh, now we have Zach Prey in a quarterback for this series. All right, first down, Maroons. And Prey will keep the football penalty flag down. And or is that the beanbag? And Valley now, as the ball is coughed up and picked up by the Valley Tigers. So Dowling fumbles. And Carson Shelton picks it up for the Valley Tigers from the Dowling 20-yard line. Yeah, a read option play to the right side right there. And Zach was taking it back into his body and lost control of it as he got hit at the same time and the ball comes loose. And Valley was quick to jump on it. And uh, now we are in that moment of adversity. Yes, sir. So Valley with the first down at the Dowling 20-yard line. And... Uh, Three minutes, one second remaining here in the first quarter. Valley threatening. John Chido, a quick uh, update from the Shield sideline. Yeah, Mark and uh, Coach, uh, the read option, uh, just uh, the ball was wet. Uh, Zach Prey tried to pull it out real quick, and it got caught on his hip and then uh, went to the ground there. Uh, it certainly did. Now Valley will try to take advantage of the turnover. They give it to their big fullback, and he barrels his way downfield, and that is Nate Wilcoxon who had uh, 36 yards and a couple carries last, or one yard and one carry, but he's their big fullback, yeah. and he blasts his way inside the 20 of Dowling. A nice hard run. Levi Hubble met him, met him in there, but that was a strong run, and uh, he earned the last two yards of that run. He certainly did. So it'll bring up second down, and they're going to give him a gain of five. Down to the 15-yard line of Dowling. Offset eye formation, and here is a handoff, and that is Fugate again, and he tries to go around left end, and he runs right into the Dowling defense led by Max Bay on that side, Matt. Yeah, Max did a really good job. We had early pressure there on that side, I think, from Jack Keogh, and then Max Bay makes the play on that, and, and we mix it third and five. Give him a half yard on that probably. We're going to give him a loss of one. Loss of one. That's Back even to the better. 16, so it is third down and six for Valley. Line of scrimmage is the Dowling 16 after the Dowling fumble on the exchange from Zach Prey to the uh, tailback Murray. Offset eye formation, and here is Lombardi. Pressure coming. Over the middle he goes. Fires it out. Caught inside the five, down to the two-yard line. Valley with the first and goal, and that is a tremendous reception that time by the wide receiver who was coming from the right side, and that was their big fullback who uh, made the catch. And Nate, Nate Wilcoxon. Wilcoxon. He made some catches last week, too. They really like him out of the backfield. He's a good blocker, but they also like to put him out into the flat, and that time they just did him right over the middle. 
just right over the top of the defensive line, and, and uh, he makes a great catch. 14-yard reception, first down and goal, Valley. I formation in the backfield, Lombardi, quarterback sneak, follows the left side of his offensive line, and no signal yet from the referee, and it'll bring up second and goal from about the one-yard line as uh, Lombardi tried to use all of his uh, six-foot-three-inch height to go in over his left guard and tackle, but it'll bring up second and goal. I think they're going to go to the same spot. I, I'd run behind <laughs> Remsburg again, you know, and, and uh, Lombardi, he, he's listed at 230 as well, so that's a couple big kids there. All right, Lombardi under center, and there's the snap, and he bowls his way in, and touchdown Tigers. Valley taking advantage of a fumble. He follows the center, Zach Shaner, and the left guard, Mason Ayers, and goes in. For the, for the Tigers' second touchdown of the night, and Dowling now finds itself behind 13 to nothing, pending the extra point. Yeah, it was, you know, Bo's a tough kid, and uh, just kept those legs churning right there. Got the, he didn't get much more than a yard, and uh, he's in the end zone, and, and now we have to see what we're made of here on offense, see if we can establish a series and, and put something together. All right, Cole Peterson in to attempt the extra point, and the ball is down, and the kick is up and good. So it's 14 to nothing. Valley leads Dowling here at Drake Stadium. We'll take a timeout on the field with 53 seconds remaining here in the first half. It's Valley 14, Dowling Catholic nothing. From Drake Stadium, this is Mark Hamadeo and Matt Madering, along with John Chido with the Central Iowa Sports Network and Iowa Catholic Radio. The value of staying active cannot be overlooked in our lives or our young athletes. However, high intensity workouts come with the risk of injury. If you or your child have sustained a sports injury, Select Physical Therapy in conjunction with Iowa Ortho are here to help with two convenient walk-in locations. From diagnosis through recovery, you'll be put directly into the hands of experts who will evaluate and treat your sports related injury. Call us today for an evaluation. We might not always know what the day will bring, but some things are certain. The sun will rise and your lights will go on. That's because at MidAmerican Energy, we're obsessively, relentlessly committed to providing you energy when and where you need it, to connecting with you and keeping our communities safe and strong. Because the most important thing we put our energy into is you. We're obsessively, relentlessly at your service. First and ten And welcome back to Drake Stadium. Mark Amadale, Matt Maindring, and John Chido as Valley kicks off, goes into the end zone touchback, and Dowling will start first and 10 from their own 20-yard line as Runes now have quarterback Zach Waters back in. Handoff goes to Murray, and Jason takes the ball from his own 20 and uh, gets it upfield for about six yards on first down. But the Tigers of Valley go up by two touchdowns. They recover a fumble by Dowling quarterback Zach Prey, recovered by Carson Shelton, and Lombardi takes it in for Valley. Five plays, 20 yards on the drive, 14 to nothing with the extra point by Peterson. So Matt Mandring, Dowling down two touchdowns, and the Maroons now offense trying to get going, get untracked. Yeah, time to get on track and establish that offensive line is the thing. Here goes Jason, just about got that one out there. But they, they found something now on the right side of the line of scrimmage. They're starting to pound that right side and pulling Alex Curtin the last two plays from his left guard position and having him kick out and, and creating a crease for Jason. First first down now on for Murray on that last carry. Carries across the 30 up near the 33-yard line. Ten seconds remaining in the quarter, and I think the Maroons will be content uh, taking a, a moment off here, and that'll be the end of the first quarter as the clock winds down. Or And we go into – we come to the end of the first quarter, so we'll take a break and come back. The score, Valley 14, Dowling Catholic nothing on a rainy night here at Drake Stadium. The rain has cleared, along with Matt Maindring, Mark Hamadil, John Chido down on the sideline. We'll be back with the second quarter in one minute here on the Central Iowa Sports Network and Iowa Catholic Radio. Hi, Ron here, head coach of West.
West Side Auto Pros. When your car's on the injured reserve, you want to get it back in the game as soon as possible. I know that. That's why you need to bring it here to West Side Auto Pros. I have a team of experts that can fix almost every automotive injury. Whether it's a fractured joint, a brake, or if your car just got its bell rung, no problem. We can even do a complete physical on your car to make sure it's game ready for the entire season. So bring your car to West Side Auto Pros and we'll get it back in the starting lineup in no time. Hey, you guys are going in the back here. Let's move it, move it, move it. You want to get stronger, faster, healthier. You want more. You want to be part of something bigger than yourself. A place for people of all ages, all walks of life, that provides opportunities for all to succeed. We do that. We're the why. Build more than muscle. Build a stronger community. And we're back here at Drake Stadium. Mark Amadale along with Matt Madering, John Chido, Central Iowa Sports Network, and, or Central Iowa Sports Network and the Iowa Catholic Radio Network. And we underway in the second quarter. Jason Murray on a first down carry gets it up to the 35-yard line for a gain of two. So the Dowling has went to four straight running plays with Jason there, Matt. Yeah, they have. They said they want to get down to business here and, and churn with that offensive line. Logan Crosman there for the Tigers makes the stop. We got Jason and Motion coming across the formation. Yeah, two receivers left, and now they fired out to Jason Murray in a lateral pass. Almost and it was broken up nicely by Valley's John Shaner. He got in the backfield. Now his brother plays on the offensive line, and John uh, nearly had that lateral pass from uh, quarterback Zach Waters uh, deflected and maybe picked off. Yeah, he was sitting there waiting for that. And one thing about it behind the line of scrimmage is no pass interference. So, I mean, there was contact right. there, but that doesn't mean anything at that point. And, uh, yeah. That was close to going the other way. Certainly was. The Maroons now with a second down play. I'm sorry, third down play, third and eight. Here's a snap. Read option back to throw his waters. Fires the ball down the far sideline. He overthrew his intended receiver incomplete as the Dowling receiver fell down. It was single coverage, and he overthrew him. It'll bring up fourth down and eight for the Maroons from their own 35-yard line, and this Valley defense has been stellar tonight. Yeah, they've played really well. That's a that's a tough pass to make. You know, you get in this side of the of the field, there's not much wind, but there's a crosswind when you get out here into the opening, and uh, that ball got carried out of bounds. All right, Carter Baumler will stand back at his own 20-yard line for the Maroons, and Valley has two, has twin safeties back deep. They stand back at their uh, own 20-yard line. Bomber with the snap and a high end over end kip. And it'll go inside the 20, takes a dowling bounce inside the 10. They'll let it go. And then finally, uh, <laughs> pouncing on the ball at the five-yard line is the uh, Tiger punt returner. Kind of dangerous that time, Matt. But Valley will be pinned deep in their own territory at their own five-yard line. Wow. Yeah, that's one of those where Coach Swenson was probably saying, get away, get away, because the only thing that could, the only bad thing's going to happen right there because either it's going to go in the end zone for a touchback or he covers it at the three-yard line. And uh, we got him in a hole right now, so let's see if the defense can step up, get a stop here, and give us some field position to make a, make things happen here in the second quarter. Right, let's go down to our Shields sideline reporter. That is where John Chido is at tonight. Johnny? Well, you know, the thing is, is the Allen Catholic has is, is really made their own mistakes with uh, the penalties and, and then the fun bowl, the bad field position. But uh, now we have the wind at our back and Valley pinned inside their 10-yard line. So see if we can flip field positions here. All right. And uh, Valley deep in their own territory. And here's Lombardi. Hands it right off the Fugate. Right up the gut he goes. Stays between the tackles and carries tacklers. And from his own five-yard line, he gets it down. It's a first down, it looks like. Matt, he does. They, they spot him down right at the 16-yard line. Yeah, that was a nice run. Uh, Ryan Adam in on the stop on that. And, uh, you know, they they he had a lot of room to run right there. And yes, they had a did. big gap for him. And, and uh, we need to make sure we get down in that line a little bit and plug things up here for us. 12-yard game for Fugate on first down. And it'll bring up first and 10. Line of scrimmage is a Tiger 17. Valley going left to right. They're defending the north end zone. Wind out of the south tonight after the storm moved through. And now Lombardi handoff right up the gut to Fugate. He runs into a wall of Maroons and stopped at the line of scrimmage for no gain. It'll bring up second and 10 from the 17. Wow. Another big hit by Levi Hummel right there at the line of scrimmage. And that's uh, fun to see. Last week, 
We didn't call his name quite so much in the first game out there, and now he's getting his game speed going. That was a great play by Levi. Certainly was. So the Tigers facing second and 10 from their own 17-yard line as Lombardi is the quarterback, and he'll send his receivers out. One to the right and one to the left, and now Chuck Britton, our referee, has a stoppage of play. Let's pick up it on the uh, Please. field mic. Please run seven seconds off the play clock. And you heard uh, Chuck Britton, they want seven seconds off the play clock, so. One of the things we have to look for here is they really like to run towards their fullback and keep their fullback in every play. And this is one of those setups here where you have a second long where it's easy to fake the run here and run him out into the flats. He's got good hands. All right, Lombardi with an offset eye formation in the backfield. Under center, play action fake. Lombardi rolling to his left, avoids tacklers, fires the ball out, and it's caught. Caught by the tight end that time for Valley. That's, and that's Wilcoxon again. I think I think that's the fullback. Um, and he's run Wilkinson. out of bounds after yeah, a Wilcoxon. first down. Yeah, yeah, it is Wilcoxon. Yep. And he was wide open after he Lombardi was. dodged the bullet. He, that's a, such a tough play to defend when that fullback sits in there and blocks for a second at the line of scrimmage and the quarterback rolls out and then there's no way there to take care of him. 12-yard gain on uh, quarterback Lombardi. Did a nice job avoiding dowling defenders. Rolled to his left. And he's a right-handed quarterback and found Wilcox and wide open and a first down for Valley. At their own 29-yard line, Valley leads it. By the score of 14 to nothing over Dowling here in the second quarter with 9.45 remaining. Offset eye, Lombardi under center, gives to Fugate, and he's hit and driven down for a gain of one at the 30-yard line. Nice coverage that time by the Dowling defense. Yeah, again, Levi Hummel on that play, and uh, Owen Schultz on the, on the play there too, making him turn inside. So way to stretch it out. It was a stretch play to the right side, and, and uh, the Dowling defense did a great job of stringing it out and then making the play. So Fugate. With a gain of one, brings up second down nine for Valley. And they sp split out two receivers to the right. Valley going left to right in front of us here at Drake Stadium as they defend the north end zone. And out of the shotgun Lombardi and read option. And the give is to Fugate. And Trey is hit and driven down. The Dowling defense stiffens right at the point of attack for no gain in the play. Yeah, that was that was Jack Keel right there high, and I believe it was, again, Levi Hummel low on that one. So it was a great job up front defensively, and uh, um, we got the stop on that and created a third and long situation. The Dowling fans in front of us raise, rising to their feet, trying to cheer on the defense. Dowling in home maroon jerseys with white pants and helmets. Valley in their all-white visiting uniforms. And Al Lombardi calling out signals. Third and nine Valley from their own 30. Two receivers right. Read option Lombardi. The give is to Fugate. Slips a tackle and gets up to about the 35-yard line. He'll gain five. It'll bring up fourth and five for Valley. Yeah, again, Levi Hummel on the tackle there. They did they did uh, run a little read option, and uh, we got the stop, and we're going to get the ball back. Let's see them punt into the wind and, and make things happen for us here. Valley scores were a couple of touchdown. Trey Fugate on a 66-yard run gave the Tigers a 7-0 lead. And then Lombardi, Bo Lombardi on a quarterback sneak, capped off a five-play 20-yard drive, taking advantage of a Dowling fumble. And the Tigers lead it 14-0 with 7.45 remain. High snap, and Peterson gets it away. And Dowling will let it bounce inside the 40. And it'll come to rest right around the 30-yard line. That's where the Dowling offense will take over first and 10 from their own 29-yard line. They'll spot it down. Let's go down to our Shields sideline reporter tonight. That is John Chido. He's been following action. And, John, give us an update on the Dowling sideline. Well, Mark, uh, you know, it's been a tough go, as we know, for the first part of this ball game, And we haven't been in a rhythm offensively. So we need to put together a, a nice sustaining drive with the wind at our back and see if we can get something going other than two, three plays and then have to kick the football. Yeah, that's that's been tough, and I know, you know, Matt Maynard, you know, it's just kind of a trying to feel everybody out, both coaches, Gary Swenson, the veteran coach at Valley, and Tom Wilson at Dowling trying to kind of feel each other out, try to see what's working, and now the Maroons with a first down from their own 29-yard line, and quarterback for Dowling is Zach Waters, and he gives it to tailback Jason Murray, and he gets across the 30 and maybe up to the 34-yard line for a gain of five. So just kind of, you know, playing that chess match game. Yeah, you know, it was a good run there by Jason, tucked up inside there. Nick um, Buttle from the Tigers makes the stop. Uh, Jason gets in there behind Hagen and Curtin and Alger and just keeps those legs churning. 
So Murray a gain of five. It'll bring up second and five Maroons. You have the wind at their back as that wind out of the south tonight after the storm passed through. And here is quarterback Waters oh, back downfield. Fires it out. It's caught by Lyman. Inside the 20. Inside the 10. Five. Da touchdown Maroons. And Dowling goes over the top. And uh, quarterback Zach Waters finds Jack Lyman. And Dowling scoring from 76 yard, or 66 yards out. That's one of those situations where the Tigers were getting real aggressive with their with their defensive backs and their safeties coming up and, and to run, stop the run. And uh, we ran Lyman off that line of scrimmage right there from that tight end position. I believe he's a tight end position. Yes, he was. And uh, right through the coverage, and that's an easy pass and catch. All right, Baumler in to attempt the extra point for uh, Dowling Catholic. And the... Holder is Zach Prey. And the long staffer tonight for Dowling is Tom Nolan. The extra point is up. It's high enough, and I think it's off the right. It is yeah. no good. So score remains. Valley, 14, Dowling Catholic, 6. Along with Matt Mandry, Mark Amadale, we'll be back after this timeout. John Chido with the report when we come back from this Dowling sideline here on Iowa Catholic Radio and the Central Iowa Sports Network. The other guys, they think they know what special means. At Godfather's Pizza, we do special, and we do it better. We add the tea to the Godfather's Special Tea Pizza with your name on it. Classic combo, all meat combo, hot stuff, taco, yeah, even veggie and more. All of them piled high with the best toppings and 100% real cheese. Treat yourself special. Order specialty pizzas from Godfather's Pizza. There's no doubt about it. Saving feels great. At MidAmerican Energy, we love saving too. Saving the environment by supporting tree planting, which improves air quality. Saving money by investing in wind energy, which keeps rates low. And saving you energy by providing tips to help make your home more energy efficient. Which means you can take those savings and put your energy into having fun. Saving definitely feels great. So does being obsessively, relentlessly at your service. And welcome back to Drake Stadium. Mark Amadale, Matt Mandering, and John Chido as Valley now leads 14 to 6 after Dowling has just went uh, 81 yards on two plays, capped off by Jack Lyman's 66 yard touchdown catch from quarterback Zach Waters. Now the end kickoff by Carter Baumler, and ball goes well. It's fielded at the three yard line, but deflects off the uh, kick returner for Valley, the punt returner, if you will. And goes in the end zone. It's an automatic touchback, uh, Matt Mandry. Yeah. And let's go down to our Dowling sideline. That's where John Chido's at for our Shields sideline report tonight. John, take it away. Well, what a great pitch and catch by Waters and Lyman. And it was set up by a, a stretch run to the left. And, and Lyman slipped out uh, from the right side over the middle. And, and they sold the run great and slipped it over the top for a 66-yard touchdown. Now Dowling Catholic needs a big defensive stand to get back in this ballgame. Remember that happened last year with Sam and Goalie. The Maroons went over the top and uh, got the Valley defense from uh, trying to keep everybody in the box. And the Maroons uh, went on the way for the win. But right now, Valley leads at 14 to 6. First down, Tigers at their own 20 yard line. The Lombardi at quarterback, read option. And he doesn't uh, uh, give it to his tailback. Instead, he runs into Mr. Uh, Jack Keel, who stuffs him in the backfield for a loss of two, Matt. Yeah, great play by Jack there. He and uh, um, the lineman there. Nate Collins got in there and stopped that play up and almost coughed the ball up. There was a the ball was loose there for a little bit in his hands, but Bo did a good job of hanging on to it. But great pressure, second and long. It's where we want to be. And we want to thank uh, the supporters of Iowa Catholic Radio. They include Two Rivers Glass and Door, Catholic Tuition Organization, and R and R Realty. We thank them for supporting our broadcast on Iowa Catholic Radio. Now a little swing pass by Lombard. It looked like he was going to run the kind of a diversive play of the option. Instead, he swings the bat ball out to Jack Johnson on a lateral pass. And was that Johnson or uh, Parker Marshall? And it's incomplete. Peterson on the stop there. Or Sorry, it's complete, but for a short game. Yeah, I, I, I think they no give a game. completion for no gain. <laughs> it's a matter if it was number six or eight for Valley. I don't know if that was Jack Johnson or not. I think no. it was Johnson. So we'll give him the credit for no gain. I'll bring up Third and long for Valley. The line of scrimmage is their own 17-yard line. Tigers going into the wind, left to right in front of us here at Drake Stadium with uh, five and a half minutes remaining in the second quarter. Now a draw play. They hand off to the 
the tailback, and there's that Fugate back there. And he's hit and stopped maybe as he crosses the 20 and will bring up fourth down for the Valley Tigers. And it looks like that might have been Creighton Mitchell on the carry. Yeah, Mitchell. Levi Hummel on the stop there, and then a couple other guys came in and enjoyed him. But Levi did a great job of shedding that first blocker. And uh, Wilcoxon was out there to get him, and, and Levi shucked him and, and got on to Fugate, and it's punting time. Yes, it is. With that last play, it was a Creighton Mitchell, the junior running okay. back who was in there for Fugate. And bring up fourth down for Valley. And the Tigers will punt from the line of scrimmage, the 23-yard line. And Peterson with a kick off the side of his foot. It's going to angle towards the near sideline. That's, that's dangerous. And it's going to be there. stopped to, and down right there by the Valley Tigers. And that was Roy Jensen who downed it at the Dowling 46-yard line. So the Maroons in excellent shape for this drive. And they'll start first and 10 from their own 46-yard line. Let's go down to the Dowling sideline. Things starting to change, especially field position here, John Chido, as we go down to our Shields sideline reporter, John Chido. Yeah, you know, the wind came into factor there. We able to, to flip the field position and force them to punt in this wind, which is swirling out of the south. Has it on the 45-yard uh, line, so see what we can do here. All right, Zach praying at quarterback, number 14 for Dowling, and a handoff goes to Murray, and he slips, slides, zigzags, and he's finally tripped up inside the Tiger 40-yard line. Nice move by Jason Murray, and boy, did he start zigzag zip and I think he uh, hurt a few ankles for the Valley defense. He got a first down out of that. Jason really showcased his footwork there. Holy that, that is amazing. He's so quick, he and is. nobody can find him because yeah. he's, so, he's so small. He just really did a good job of staying on, on behind the blocker until he got out in space, and then it was just him moving his feet and keeping his shoulders squared. First down, Dowling at the Valley 35-yard line. The Maroons started at their own 46-yard line, and now the handoff goes to Murray right up the gut, follows Hagen, the center, and he gets it inside the 30, down to the 28-yard line to pick up a seven. Drew Jurek for the Tigers on the stop there. All of a sudden, the offensive line is starting to take over here a little bit. 19-yard run by Murray on first down, a seven-yard run on that last play, and it'll bring up first and 10 Dowling at the Tiger 29-yard line. As we have 3.45 remaining in the half, Valley leading 14 to six over Dowling. Maroon's threatening, hand off Murray. And he gets outside left in and he's tripped up as he approaches the 26 yard line. He'll gain three. Carson Shelton on the stop there for the Tigers. And uh, we're really working that left side right now of Curtin and Nank and they're blasting holes for Jason and letting him get up in there. Third and short, let's see what we can do here. All right. Runes now as they get their play in from the near sideline, the Dowling sideline right in front of us, the home side here at Drake Stadium, right here in front of the press box on the west side. Now the Maroons get the line of scrimmage, 10 seconds on the play clock, and the quarterback is number 14, Zach Prey. Pistol formation, two receivers left, one second left, and the Maroons are not going to get the playoff. And Dowling will be guilty of a delay of game. So that comes in at an opportune time. That'll back the Maroons up five yards, back to the Valley 31. Yeah, I don't know if miscommunication there between Zach and the center or if um, he lost track of where the play clock was at. Um, that's a takes a, makes this a little more of an interesting play call here on third and five. Maroons are going to stay with what they had, the same formation. Now they're going to call timeout. So timeout on the field. We'll take a one-minute break and return. It's 14-6. to six. Valley leads Dowling with 2.58 remaining here in the second quarter from Drake Stadium and Iowa Catholic Radio and the Central Iowa Sports Network. Truck Month at Schottenkirk Chevrolet Walk-In. Up to 10,000 others off select new 18 Silverado 1500. Includes the LTZs and high countries. New 18 Silverado Double Cab LT. 275 per month. Only 1999 though at signing. Truck Month in Walking. New 18 Equinox LT. 229 per month. Only 1999 though at signing. New 18 Cruise. 179 per month. Only 1999 though at signing. Plus 20% off new Spark, Sonic, and Impala through the end of the month. Schottenkirk Chevrolet Walk-In. Walkinchevy.com. Here's to everyone who believes in competition and good sportsmanship, who knows it's not about the trophies or the medals, but rather the lessons learned. For those who understand, it's not whether you win or lose, just that you give your best. So go ahead, place them up, take the field, have fun, and play. For the experience, for the memories, for the love of the game, Shields.
And welcome back to Drake Stadium. Mark Amadale, Matt Mandering, and John Chido on a handoff on, finally handoff to uh, Jason Murray and a first down for the Maroons as Dowling headed on the Valley 31 after delay of game, Matt, and the yeah. Maroons kind of rectified that situation. Yeah, a little stretch pitch there to Jason. Kind of an interesting play there, and Colin Cook did a good job blocking out here from his split in position, and uh, Jason got the yardage. First down Dowling, he got six yards at the 25 of Valley, and now the Maroons with a running play right up the gut. I think they switched uh, tailbacks. That might be Tegan Johnson in uh, there. We'll I think, see. I think it was a quarterback draw. Zach Prey held on to the ball there, and he ran up the middle in there behind uh, Greg Hagan and uh, Curtin. So Prey kept the football, followed his center, and got it down to the about the 23-yard line, we'll call it. So a gain of two, and bring up second and eight. Quarterback Zach Prey in there as the Maroons alternate their tail or their quarterbacks. So and now Murray back in, back to throw his prey, looking left side for a screen. And it's caught by Murray, but he was run down at the fifth at the 25-yard line from behind by big number 99, and that's Jacob McCudden, who tracked him down. And I'll that's tell you what, slow developing play and maybe had a little bit too much uh, arc in the uh, base in the soft, in well, the football mind. Zach had to throw over a defensive lineman and McCudden read the play and, and got Jason just as the ball got there. So that brings up third down and 11 for the Maroons. Dowling trying to attempt to tie the score. It's 14 to 6. Valley leads Dowling. Minute 35 remaining here in the second quarter. Back to throw. And the ball is nearly intercepted and oh. bounces around incomplete. And I'll tell you what, Prey made a, a read that he wants back because he was looking to his right and threw it right to the Valley defender, and that being Parker Marshall. Parker Marshall almost intercepted that twice. <laughs> it deflected and bounced yeah, off everything. Yeah, he, he had it right on his number, and then it bounced off his chest and into the back of another guy in front of him and then back to him again and then out. So we dodged a bullet there. Incomplete pass. It'll bring up fourth down for Dowling on the 25-yard line of Valley. Fourth and 11. So the Maroons need to get the ball inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line, and we have a timeout on the field. You know, Coach Coach was talking about in the pregame about Baumler uh, being able to kick the, kick the field goal from this distance easily, and this would be about a 42-yard field goal at the uh, exchange between the center and holder has not been very good, and we're on our backup uh, long snapper. That's true. As you pointed out earlier, Mark, and so this makes this a little more of a difficult call, I think, for Coach Wilson. Yeah, Tom Nolan's got to step up. He's number 66. He is the long snapper tonight. And, of course, the uh, holder for Dowling is Zach Prey, who's uh, currently in this uh, yeah. this lineup. Let's go down to the Dowling sideline. That's our Shield sideline reporter, John Scheidel. Johnny? Well, you guys bring up a great point because the last exchange from center to, to the holder wasn't very good, but we do have a winner on our back, but it, I can't tell if we're bringing – I think we're bringing our offense out and we're going for it here. Yeah, you're right, John. Dowling's bringing their offense out. Murray comes back out, and so does Prey. So the Maroons going for it on 4th and 11 from the Valley, 25-yard line. Prey back to throw. Read option. Fires towards the end zone. Got a man open and underneath, and the pass is incomplete. That's the first attempt that time by Edward Thompson, and he underthrew him just a hair just on the post pattern. Yeah, it was a – Thompson ran a great pattern in there, got himself open on the post route over the middle, and Zach laid it out there. And again, throwing throwing with that wind that way, it threw it off a little bit and uh, it just out of his reach. So Valley will got take a hand over. On it. Yeah, Valley will take over first and 10 with a minute 22 remaining from their own 25 yard line. And we want to mention some of our supporters of Iowa Catholic Radio. They include RR Realty, Skeffington's Formal Wear, and our good folks at Tumi and Sons. We want to thank Mario and all the folks down there at 1501 Southeast First Street, online at tomeandsons.com. We want to thank them for their support of our coverage of Dowling Catholic football in our 42nd year here in Iowa Catholic Radio. Penalty flag down, first down play for Valley from their own 25-yard line. Fugate got the handoff, but penalty flag, and I'll stop the clock with a minute 16 left in the half. Yeah, Drew Peterson on the stop there for the Maroons, and uh, we got that play stopped up. We're going to see, did we call timeout? They stopped the clock with a penalty. Let's try to pick it up from Chuck Britt. I think we'll probably decline that. Not make enough men on the line of scrimmage. If you can hear Chuck Britton, our referee, Matt. Make it second and ten here. And the way that Valley has been punting, i got to believe we want to try and get them at least to punt the ball here and, and regardless of where we end up with it, see if we can make something happen on that exchange. 
All right, so it'll bring up second down for Valley on their own 25-yard line. We only have one timeout left, though. And uh, Valley has all three of theirs, if need be. I think the official discussing uh, whether maybe or not the to restart the, the clock. clock or the play clock. <laughs> yeah. You know, at halftime, we're going to talk to uh, Dr. Dan Ryan, the president of Dowling Catholic High School. He'll be joining us for that interview, both on Central Iowa Sports Network, CISN.TV, and Iowa Catholic Radio. As we simulcast tonight's game from Drake Stadium. That's, that's the only problem with declining the penalty there. You, the clock does start right away. The clock winds on the whistle, so they're going to be able to run off some time here. And they do the play clock down to nine. Lombardi out of the shotgun, oh. and now we've got a timeout for Valley. We'll take a one-minute break with 57 seconds remaining in the first half. It's Valley 14, Dowling 6, and back after these messages along our network stations, Iowa Catholic Radio and the Central Iowa Sports Network. This is Iowa. Coach Lenson is not. And here, we don't just dream of a better tomorrow, of a smarter way to do business or live, of perseverance and progress. We inspire it in others. We challenge the conventional, reimagine what it means to be better, and then dare ourselves to make it great. This is Iowa. And here, we don't just dream, we make history. Why do I look for the seal? It's about trust. Whether I'm buying a car, hiring a contractor, finding a tax preparer, or an honest mechanic, the Better Business Bureau seal means this business meets high standards. When I see the seal, I know I'll get what I pay for. No more taking chances and no more worries. And I feel good about supporting local businesses. My life is so much easier knowing I can always trust BBB accredited businesses. It pays to look for the seal. See for yourself at bbb.org backslash Iowa. And we're back here on Iowa Catholic Radio and the Central Iowa Sports Network. The handoff goes to Fugate while we were away, and Trey gets a couple of yards, and uh, he stopped there. So it brings up third down, and from the Valley 26-yard line, as Valley leads it 14-6, to six, final 25 seconds. Dowling has one timeout left, Valley two, and the Tigers are running this all the way down. Play clock down to five, and they're going to have to snap it here, Matt. Yeah, it was at the Collins and Hummel on the stop in that last play. They're going to let the clock run out here. Uh, and Coach Winston calls a timeout before the clock hits zero. So we've got a timeout on the field. We'll keep it here with 14 seconds remaining here in the first half. And Valley leading 14 to 6. Mark Amadil joined by Matt Maindring, the principal at Dowling Catholic High School and former head football coach of Sheldon. Got to get that plug in, especially for the TV listeners watching tonight. And let's go down to the sidelines where we have the Dowling 8th grade football coach, one of the many football coaches they have at 8th grade. That's John Chido, who's on our Shields sideline. And that's the Dowling sideline tonight. Johnny? Or maybe not. <laughs> you know, it's going to be interesting to hear what Coach Swenson does here. He's got the opportunity to throw the ball here if he wants because the clock's going to get stopped either way because we're going to call the timeout. So I got to see him probably trying to loosen this one up and try to get one deep on us. Let's see if he does. It's third down and nine Valley from their own 26-yard line. Now they're going to keep it on the ground. Hand off Fugate, and he's stacked at the line of scrimmage. He's trying to go over right guard, and he found a row of maroons. And Dowling will stop the clock. We'll take a one-minute break and be back. 14-6, to six, Valley leads Dowling back in one minute on Iowa Catholic Radio. Best deals of the year at Schottenkirk Ford, Indianola. Batteries, Johnny, I think batteries on your mic. For 60 months, plus up to $10,000 off select new 18 Ford F-150 XLT. 0% for 72 months, plus $1,000 on select new 18 Edge. Escape and Explorers. You get all of the rebates, incentives, and discounts, plus more for your trade. 0% for 60 months, plus up to $10,000 off select new F-150s won't last. Only at Schottenkirk Ford, Indianola. SchottenkirkFord.com. Building a strong community doesn't happen overnight. It takes a vision for the future, the ability to turn a challenge into a success, and individuals who inspire new generations of growth. Greater Des Moines has done a lot of growing over the years, and so have we. At Brick Gentry Law, your success is something that we create together. Thank you for making us a part of your community. Thank you for 50 years. And we're back here at the Drake Stadium as 
Cole Peterson punts it away for Valley, and it's fair catch at the 49-yard line. So Dowling will take over first and 10 from their own 49-yard line. Matt Stilwell with the uh, fair catch. And Dowling with one play here at Matt Maindring with three seconds remaining. The Dowling offense will come out for one play. With the wind here, you know, you get get Zach Waters a little bit of time there in the pocket and, and see how far he can throw it. And then Valley is thinking the same thing. They got four guys standing 20 yards behind the line of scrimmage. So let's see what we got here. Yeah, that's true. All right. There is a Dowling with the football. The quarterback is Waters. Back to throw. Sets up in the pocket. Uh, slips out of the pocket. He's going to be brought down, and that will end the half as Zach is tackled in the backfield. Nice job that time by Valley's Jake Coleman on the sack. And we'll go to halftime with Valley leading Dowling 14-6 to here on the Central Iowa Sports Network and Iowa Catholic Radio. We're going to go down to the Dowling sideline. That is where John Chido is at right there at the 35-yard line. And Johnny has our Shields sideline report and our halftime update with head coach Tom Wilson of Dowling. Take it away, John. Mark, can you hear me? You're good. Okay, I have Coach Wilson here. Coach, uh, a tough go in the first half, tough, hard battle. It seemed like he couldn't get in rhythm early and then had that nice big play for a six-yard touchdown pass and then uh, kind of flipped field position there uh, late in the first half. Yeah, the wind's a factor. And, and uh, once we started driving, then we got behind the sticks uh, and then they capitalized. They have the, the big play and uh, we turned the ball over deep on our own territory. So um, we've kind of hurt ourselves. We uh, missed the pass play. Um, they're on fourth down, uh, just didn't connect. And, you know, we had a chance to, to go in you know, a point down or else tie it up. So uh, we're probably fortunate to be here, but uh, we think it'll be a four-quarter game. All right, thank you, Coach. Best of luck in the second half. All right, thank you, John Chido, for that halftime interview with head coach Tom Wilson of Dowling Catholic as we go to halftime. And uh, Valley leading Dowling 14-6 to alongside Matt Maindring. I'm Mark Amadillo. I want to thank John Chido for our, those sideline reports. We'll take a break and we'll be back uh, with this break and come back with our halftime interview that President of Dowling Catholic High School, Dr. Dan Ryan, will join us coming up here on Iowa Catholic Radio and the Central Iowa Sports Network. Building a strong community doesn't happen overnight. It takes a vision for the future, the ability to turn a challenge into a success, and individuals who inspire new generations of growth. Greater Des Moines has done a lot of growing over the years, and so have we. At Brick Gentry Law, your success is something that we create together. Thank you for making us a part of your community. Thank you for 50 years. Hi, I'm Chris with Fireplace Superstore. It's August and time for our early end of season sale. Groups that we have too many of are marked way down, like this Sun Villa group, $1,000 off to $32.99. Or this North Cape Avant group, Sofa or Sectional, 20% off. Or this great Lloyd Flanders Charleston group, $1,000 off to $32.99. The best weather for outdoor furniture is still ahead of us, and we still have Iowa's largest selection. Miss your hometown clothing store, the one that had it all, everything to get the work done all in one place. GNL Clothing is your hometown Iowa store. Stop in and see us, or we're only a click or phone call away. Family owned for nearly a century. GNL Clothing, 1801 Ingersoll, Des Moines. GNL Clothing, your size, your style, we made it all. Moms typically get to make a majority of the healthcare decisions for their family. That can be a lot of pressure, but not for me, because I know the choice is ours. From medical tests like MRIs, X rays, CAT scans, and of course mammograms, Ask your doctor to refer you to Iowa Radiology. They work around our hectic schedules. They're the best at what they do, and they're so great with my family. They truly care, and it shows. Visit iowaradiology.com or call to schedule an appointment. Iowa Radiology, our focus is your good health. And welcome back to halftime here at Drake Stadium. Mark Amadil along with uh, Matt Mandring and John Chido. Our halftime score, Valley Leads Dowling 14-6 at halftime here at Drake, and I'm joined by the president of Dowling Catholic High School, uh, Dr. Dan Ryan here at halftime. And Dr. Dan, thanks for joining us. And hey, this is about a year ago we had you on. Right. Matter of fact, a year ago, that was your first year at Dowling. Congratulations and welcome. Well, thank you. Yeah, I appreciate you having me, and it's been a, a great first year. I think we really uh, 
got introduced to the community and got our feet on the ground uh, to know the staff and start moving programs forward. And so we're really excited about uh, this year and getting off to a good start. Well, let's talk about the, the first year. School just started. We're in our second yeah. week. And uh, I know the staff was there early. And I saw the tweets by uh, Mr. Maindring and yourself right. and some of the other staff members. Uh, getting the staff in the building first and before the students, off to a great start. You know, it's great to have the energy of the kids, have them back in the building. It's a lot of fun to see them, uh, a lot of enthusiasm at the beginning of the year. Um, in fact, we have a, quite a, a big freshman class. Uh, we're about 385 freshmen, and that's the biggest in 12 or 15 years, so we're excited about that. Had our first school mass, uh, and they were so impressive on how they were so reverent and uh, respectful throughout mass with Bishop Pates. And so we think uh, we really have some good new staff and are off uh, to a running start. Well, you had the all-school mass, and that's always impressive, and I, I saw that. But, uh, you know, new programs. You know, it's a new year, mm -hmm. new programs, mm -hmm. and l let our listeners know, you being the president of Dowling, what's going on inside the building? What are some yeah. of the new things that Dowling is doing? So we have a pilot program going this year called Insight, and uh, we have two teachers who participated in that. But the whole program is kind of based on uh, some premises that a long-term project really helps students uh, succeed long-term in life. That's a very authentic experience. And we also wanted to give them some career awareness. So instead of sending our students out, we decided how can we bring those programs into our school. So we had one teacher that did a, what we call an externship at Adventureland and one at Kemen Industries. And they spent part of their summer there learning about their processes. And they're bringing those back and connecting them to the classroom, uh, the curriculum that's going on, but using those experts to come in from time to time or a field trip out there. And then they're going to present a project back to the leadership at Kemen and at Adventureland. And so it's really a, a great way to get uh, the real world into the classroom and let those students learn what it's like to write a professional email or, or work in a collaborative group. So we're very excited. The teachers did well. Um, and we're off to a good start with that one. And that could be future employment for some of those Dowling That's students, right. especially That's over right. there at Kemen, who's been a longtime supporter of Dowling, as you know, and Adventureland. Definitely, definitely. We're glad to be partnering with both of them and think that uh, it'll be really beneficial to the employers and to the students. Now, Dowling is all about, you know, faith, and that's part of the mission statement, but uh, what is Dowling doing to keep the students kind of involved with their faith, right. uh, especially now that school starts? I know it's difficult once they graduate. We talk about that uh, at the college level, uh, keeping, mm -hmm. you know, keep that faith going, but uh, right now in school, what's, what are some of the things going on with that? Well, that's a good question, and it really leads into kind of a, a growing emphasis at Dowling, which is we're not just talking about what's happening in our, in our corridors, but what are our students going to be like after they leave here and really putting a focus on that. And again, uh, the Insight program kind of helps them get prepared for that. Uh, but we have a new program called Oot Feed em, uh, that really uh, helps the students while they're at Dowling, maybe their junior and senior year, get into some small group Bible studies uh, and that they get a relationship with an adult uh, who's strong in their faith and active and uh, gives them an opportunity to form kind of a, a, a cohort or a group that they work together in their faith. But the, the exciting second year of that is that um, those students then are staying connected together regardless of what university they're going. And we've got some small uh, scholarships we've given out to some students to kind of be the leader of those groups. And then when they come back into town, uh, they'll be having events at Dowling or at other people's homes to kind of keep them uh, talking about their faith and being interactive in that. And so we're hopeful that's really going to be something that bridges that gap and helps them stay active in their faith uh, well into their adult life. Visit with Dr. Dan Ryan, the president of Dowling Catholic High School, as we're at halftime here at Drake Stadium as Valley leads Dowling 14 to 6 here at halftime on Armed Forces Night, and that's great to have this game being broadcast right. all across the nation, all across the world on the Armed Forces Radio Network. We're glad to be a part of that. Definitely. And Dr. Ryan, a year ago you were brand new, and I asked you this earlier, but how's your first year been? You've had to, you know, get acclimated right. to Central Iowa. You, you've been in Northwest western and eastern Iowa you had to get right. central right. Iowa the first time you and your family have adjusted well it seems mm -hmm. and uh, year one under the belt for you you know it was a, an exciting year uh, but it's really good to start the second cycle and know some of the events and when you go to uh, the fall pep rally and see all the families there that you've gotten to know uh, a lot of the students and of course the staff and um, really the thing that I'm enjoying about it is that growing sense of community that I'm a deeper part of that but also that we're able to take uh, really get our feet under us and get moving on these programs like we're talking about and we've got an incredible staff and some new staff that have come on and really contributed early on in both administration and in the uh, teaching ranks and so we're just thrilled to be part of the Dowling community and think we've got a lot of great things in front of us. I know last year, last spring when school ended, 
you had a lot of staff members retiring. Obviously, right. you've got to replace them, and that was the challenge, obviously, is to replace uh, retired staff members, real good ones, with new mm -hmm. ones, and mm -hmm. you've done that. You and your staff have done that. Right. Well, we're very blessed, and, of course, education is a people business, so you need to make sure you do the best you can with hiring and retaining, and we've had a good record of that at Dowling, and we want to keep that moving forward. All right, Dr. Ryan, we're going to, uh, uh, we're going to wrap things up. Anything you want to say to our listeners who are watching and listening to us on Iowa Catholic Radio Worldwide? Any final thoughts for the, uh, the coming school year as we just got underway? Well, we appreciate everyone's support of Dowling um, and keeping this strong tradition together of uh, uh, really the strongest Catholic school in, in Iowa and really what I think is one of the best schools in Iowa. And I just want to say go Maroons. Let's have a good second half. That's right. And uh, Mr. Mainring's on the clock right now. He's, he, hasn't been, he hasn't had a loss yet, and tonight he's in jeopardy. You know that. <laughs> we'll, we'll keep him working on it. <laughs> okay. Dr. Dan Ryan, the president of Dowling Catholic High School, has been my guest here on Iowa Catholic Radio and the Central Iowa Sports Network. We'll return with more from Drake Stadium after this two-minute break. Once again, our halftime score, Valley 14 and Dowling 6 here on Iowa Catholic Radio and the Central Iowa Sports Network. Moms typically get to make a majority of the health care decisions for their family. That can be a lot of pressure, but not for me, because I know the choice is ours. For medical tests like MRIs, x-rays, CAT scans, and of course mammograms, ask your doctor to refer you to Iowa Radiology. They work around our hectic schedules, they're the best at what they do, and they're so great with my family. They truly care, and it shows. Visit iowaradiology.com or call to schedule an appointment. Iowa Radiology, our focus is your good health. The value of staying active cannot be overlooked in our lives or our young athletes. However, high intensity workouts come with the risk of injury. If you or your child have sustained a sports injury, Select Physical Therapy in conjunction with Iowa Ortho are here to help with two convenient walk-in locations. From diagnosis through recovery, you will be put directly into the hands of experts who will evaluate and treat sports-related injury. Call us today for an evaluation. We might not always know what the day will bring, but oh, some can... things are certain. Hey, the Johnny, you there? And your lights will go on. That's because at Mid American Energy, we're obsessively, relentlessly committed to providing you energy when and where you need it, to connecting with you and keeping our communities safe and strong. Because the most important thing we put our energy into is you. We're obsessively, relentlessly at your service. Hi, Ron here, head coach of Westside Auto Pros. When your car is on the injured reserve, you want to get it back in the game as soon as possible. I know that. That's why you need to bring it here to Westside Auto Pros. I have a team of experts that can fix almost every automotive injury. Whether it's a fractured joint, a brake, or if your car just got its bell rung, no problem. We can even do a complete physical on your car to make sure it's game ready for the entire season. So bring your car to Westside Auto Pros and we'll get it back in the starting lineup in no time. Hey, you guys are dogging it back here. Let's move it, move it, move it. And welcome back to Drake Stadium. And alongside Matt Mandry, Mark Amadale, halftime score, Dowling Trailing Valley 14 to six, as the rain is held off and it ended up being a pretty nice night uh, for the contest. We want to mention some of our supporters of Iowa Catholic Radio, and they include the Chad Harris Mortgage Team at Fidelity Bank. I want to thank Chad and all the fine folks there. Residential, investment, or commercial real estate financing. Chad and his team are here to assist online, Chad Harris Mortgage. Dot com and Paper Systems, a proud sponsor of Dowling Catholic Football, and they specialize in corrugated disposable containers and liners and various styles of hard sided containers. 515 280 1111 or online paper systems.com. And Mark Amadale, Matt Mandering, John Chido, it looks like the weather is held. And uh, Matt, we got to look at some of the first half statistics from tonight's game and look at the uh, total offense for both teams. Dowling with 173 yards of total offense and Valley with 148. And the Tigers with 66 of those yards on uh, the uh, the touchdown run by Fugate. Uh, gets a lot of theirs. And Jack Lyman with a 66-yard catch for Dowling got a lot of Dowling's offense. You take those off, the, the defense have played very well. Yeah, both defense have done an, ec uh, an excellent job, you know, and we gave them the short field on the one turnover that was had in the first half. and. And uh, they took advantage of it. And we talked about that before the game. You know, the team that takes advantage of the turnover is going to end up being having the advantage. And uh, Lombardi at quarterback for Valley, he was 4 of 11 passing with uh, one touchdown for 81 yards. And 
Maroon quarterbacks went uh, four out of five, passing for 48 yards. Rushing the football, the Maroons have 100 yards on the ground. Valley with 92 yards on the ground. So let's look at some of the numbers here in the first half. And uh, I know both teams now on the field. We had this late start tonight due to the weather. But hey, Valley came out. Both teams were kind of in a stalemate that first series, Matt. But I got a little stalemate. And all of a sudden, Fugate bounces out for 66 yards. And all of a sudden, it's 7 nothing Valley. Yeah, and he, he showed his burst. Uh, the young man has a burst. And he got on the edge out there on that right side. and. Uh, there wasn't anybody catching him once he got loose there. And, uh, you know, Jason Murray can do the same thing for us and was able to create some things for us on the offensive side of the ball that way, too. And Valley got, uh, you know, condensed the defensive line. They had nine in the box, and they forced Dowling to go over the top, and they did. Jack Lyman caught that 66-yard pass for Dowling. So both teams made 66-yard big plays each, and Lyman with the catch for the Maroons to cut the score to 14-6. to six. Yeah, so it really ends up being the turnover that sits there and is yep. the difference maker right now. And, and hopefully the, the extra point doesn't come back and haunt us. I know Coach Wilson has always got a few uh, two-point conversion plays up his sleeve somewhere along the way. And Coach Swinson's probably seen about half of them. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how the second half goes here. Uh, Valley gets the ball first. And, and like you said, both defenses played very, very well. All right, we're going to take a two-minute break before the start of the second half. Once again, our halftime score from Drake Stadium is Valley 14, Dowling 6. And we'll be back with the second half after this two-minute break on Iowa Catholic Radio and the Central Iowa Sports Network. You want to get stronger, faster, healthier. You want more. You want to be part of something bigger than yourself. A place for people of all ages, all walks of life, that provides opportunities for all to succeed. We do that. We're the why. Build more than muscle. Build a stronger community. The other guys, they think they know what special means. At Godfather's Pizza, we do special, and we do it better. We add the tea. To the Godfather Specialty Pizza with your name on it. Classic combo, all meat combo, hot stuff, taco, yeah, even veggie and more. All of them piled high with the best toppings and 100% real cheese. Treat yourself special. Order specialty pizzas from Godfather's Pizza. There's no doubt about it. Saving feels great. At MidAmerican Energy, we love saving too. Saving the environment by supporting tree planting, which improves air quality. Saving money by investing in wind energy, which keeps rates low. And saving you energy by providing tips to help make your home more energy efficient. Which means you can take those savings and put your energy into having fun. Saving definitely feels great. So does being obsessively, relentlessly at your service. It's time now for Dowling Catholic High School Football, Central Iowa Sports Network. CISN.TV is Iowa's premier source for live stream high school football. High School Football on CISN.TV is brought to you by Atlantic Bottlers, Schottenkirk Chevrolet, Shields, The Better Business Bureau, GNL Clothing. Now let's go to our CISN.TV team for Dowling Catholic High School Football. And welcome back to Drake Stadium as we get set for the second half. Dowling will kick off to the Valley Tigers. Maroons will defend the south end zone and have the win at their back here in the third quarter. And Valley will defend the north end zone. They'll be going left to right in front of us. Mark Amadale joined by Matt Mandering and John Chido. And Johnny, if uh, I know it's, it was halftime, so Lord knows where our sideline reporter goes at halftime, but <laughs> hopefully he got something to drink. But uh, Johnny, give us an update on what you saw at halftime. Well, you know, it's going to be interesting to see what type of team this is. I mean, you're going to find out what type of football you team, what type of football team you have right here in the second half, being down 14-6 and stepping up and rising up to the challenge. All right, here is the kickoff by the Maroons, and it'll go into the end zone. Carter Baumler boots it in. There'll be no return by the Valley Tigers. It'll be first and 10 Valley from their own 20-yard line, and I think uh, John is correct, Matt. You know, what kind of team is Dowling going to be? What, how is Valley going to react, and what adjustments? As a coach, you know what's been made in the locker room at halftime. And that's why these early games that are so tense and so important and big, you know, big stakes for the kids end up making better teams down the road. Do you put these kids in the 
in the fire here early and see how they react. So interesting that Coach Wilson took the wind here with the in the second half. The the Tigers get the ball, and then we get to choose which way we want to go, and we chose to go with the wind. So here we go from the 20. Well, see if the wind is much of a factor. It is blowing out of the south. The, the flagpole is a uh, the flag is moving, so it has a little bit to do with it. And here's a handoff to the fullback to start the second half for Valley, and that is Wilcoxon with the. Uh, handoff and he may have gotten a yard or two up to the 22 yard line yeah Schultz and Collins in the middle there stuffed that play right away and uh, they get about a two yard two yard gain on that so the Valley offense out there the Jake Rensberg at left tackle Mason Ayers number 72 at left guard Zach Shaner is the center number 54 Carter Lowens and uh, Logan Mueller on the right side right guard and right tackle respectively the quarterback is Bo Lombardi 6'3 230 pound senior Trey Fugate in the backfield, number seven, and now we've got a penalty against the Valley Tigers. So the second half for Valley reminds me of the first series for Dowling back in that first yeah. quarter. Left guard there for the Tigers uh, shifted in his position and didn't give any time to reset, and, and at the line of scrimmage, that's going to be the penalty. So procedure call against Valley, and they'll wind the clock as the Tigers lead it 14-6. to six. Glad to have you. On a night that cleared out uh, with or cleared off after the uh, storms passed through, lightning, thunder delayed the game till 7.30. And now we're underway here in the third quarter. Handoff goes to Fugate, tries to bounce outside, and he's going to have a lot of maroon jerseys gang tackling him right about the 17-yard line. No gain in the play. It'll bring up second down and long. Great team right, the defense there. Yeah, it was great pursuit of the football there, and it was hard to see who got in there first. But it ends up being uh, Drew Peterson in on that play, and uh, I believe it was Max Bay and probably Jack Keough on that. You know, they put 11 players out there on defense, and I think 10 of those 11 made the tackle. Yeah. yeah. They swarmed to the ball. All right, third and long for Valley. Third and 13 on the opening drive of the second half of the Tigers. Two receivers right. Tight ends on the left side. High snap, Lombardi corrals it in a handoff to Fugate, and he's hit and driven down in the backfield. And he may have lost a couple yards as the runes were all over that, and I think it was big number 48 on the stop, Levi, Levi Hummel. Hummel. Yeah, Levi's had a great night tonight. You know, we didn't call his name very much last week, and uh, he is comfortable tonight, and he has made a lot of plays in the middle. He was that extra fullback in the backfield last year was Levi. Ball spotted back to the 16-yard line, so Fugate will lose a yard and will bring up fourth and 14. And doing the punting will be Cole Peterson. He stands right inside the five, and he gets it away. End over end kick, and it'll be a short kick fielded by Dowling at the uh, 45 of Valley. And with the football on the return is Edward Thompson, and he gets a nice return inside the 40 of Valley down near the 30-yard line. So Dowling offense will be in great field position. But back to Hummel, last year he was a fullback, uh, a blocking fullback. This year he's one of the starting linebackers. You know, and that's why it, it takes a game. You can't replicate the speed. And for a kid who was at the fullback on the other side of the ball last year and this year behind on the defensive side of the ball, it takes a game to get comfortable and see the speed of things happening in front of you, especially from that linebacker position. And uh, he's just having an outstanding night. All right, the return by... Dowling's uh, Edward Thompson down to the Valley 29-yard line. First and 10 Maroons, a chance to uh, cut the uh, lead in Valley in half. And now quarterback is Zach Waters. He keeps the football, rolls to his left, breaks a tackle, the 25, and he's tripped up right around the 20-yard line. He'll be shy of the first down, but a good run that time by quarterback Zach Waters. Yeah, a little quarterback option there, or it was a quarterback. It was supposed to be a throw, and... Valley had someone right there, and Zach Pumpfig got around him and just made a couple athletic moves there to get the one yard short of the yep, first down. Nine there. yard run by quarterback Zach Waters. This time he'll work out of the pistol formation with Murray in the backfield, two receivers right. They run the, uh, well, the old quarterback stretch play to the left. He's got the first down. He skips along the sideline and he's tipped out of bounds or steps out of bounds back around the 20 yard line. Let's see where they spot him down. I thought he got further downfield, but they yeah. say his foot stepped out of bounds, and is it enough still for a, a first, first down? It should be a first down, yeah. They haven't moved the sticks yet. Oh, yeah, they marked that way a lot shorter than I thought he made. Yeah, he must have stepped on the boundary. He must have. And they're going to mark Valley him. did a good job of stringing that play out, because I thought for sure we had three, four yards on that play. So it's uh, no gain, handoff to Murray, and he pushes the pile. He's got the first down and more. Right over center he goes. I think okay. Jesse Alger is still blocking his guy into the he end zone He will go there. to the whistle. 
Je that was a great block by Jesse Alger right there. He got the guy on his heels and just kept driving, and Jason was right in his back pocket. So a first down Dowling. They'll mark the ball at the 14-yard line of Valley. Gain of six that time by Murray. And it's first and 10 Maroons. And now an inside handoff goes to Murray. Bounces outside inside the 10 and down to the, about the eight-yard line. Gain of six. It'll bring up second and four from the Valley eight-yard line. And now an injured Tiger on the field after that play after he tackled Murray. Yeah, Nick Buttle from the Tigers there made a great play. Got in the backfield, and Jason just made him miss. And uh, that was all Jason right there. And then scooted out to his left side. It was a play designed to go to the right. And Jason was able to bounce that out to the left side and, and make nothing into about six yards. So injury timeout on the field. We want to remind you that I uh, want to thank our supporters of Iowa Catholic Radio and the Central Iowa Sports Network, including Two Rivers Glass and Door, our good friends at R&R Realty and Catholic Tuition Organization. Eight minutes, 31 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. Valley leads Dowling 14-6. to six. The Maroons with a second down play coming up from the eight-yard line of Valley. This is a good time to go down to our Shield sideline reporter, and that is John Chido. And, John, give us an update. Well, the offensive line is getting in rhythm now, uh, Mark, and uh, right up the middle over Greg Hagan, Jesse Alger, Alec Curtin, uh, just doing a wonderful job up front. Murray's running hard. There was a nice run there by Jack Waters, uh, being able to pull it out of the running back's belly and then pump fake and then uh, get a nice, what, 15, 16-yard gain, and now we're set up first goal, our second goal from the eight. And the Valley player being assisted off the field with the uh, by the Valley training staff and uh, Matt Nathan, that's number 23 Nathan, Nathan Williams, Williams who's listed as a defensive back and he's come up lame and earlier it was Jack Rude for Dowling who was injured the Maroon tight end was injured in the first series so both teams have lost a player each in this contest hopefully it's not for too long and uh, hopefully they'll be on the mend yeah it's always tough when you have these big games and you, you spend all off season thinking about getting to this night and, and then unfortunately you have to end up uh, leaving a little bit early. All right, Maroons are in the Bozen red zone right now. <laughs> Whatever your message may be, say more with Bozen as Dowling now with a second down play from the Valley eight yard line. Murray at tailback. And the quarterback is Zach Waters will work out of the shotgun. Toss play, Murray left side, tries to get outside the numbers. He does, dies for the end zone. Does he get in? Touchdown, touchdown Jason Murray as he gets all the way down to the starters blocks at Drake Stadium down by the relays, a 100-yard dash. I think blocks. he's been down there before. And he has. He knows where that's at. Touchdown, yeah. Maroons, and it's 14 to – got a flag uh, on the play here. We're going to – I didn't see that earlier. We're going to get a hold call well, against us. Hold on Dowling. So that uh, will wipe out the touchdown by Murray. It's that little stretch toss there, and it gives, the, stretch, offensive, yeah. Yeah, it gives the offensive line a little time to get out there and get in space and get on those smaller defensive backs. And uh, someone must have just got an arm out there. Well, that'll be 10 yards from the spot of the hold. So I'm going to spot the ball right around the, looks like the 21-yard line. It goes all the way back to the 21 from the 8-yard line. So must, the Maroons. Have, must have been out on the receiver. So that is that a one was out on the edge. huge yardage lost by the Maroons. And I'll bring up second down. And 17 from the 21-yard line of Valley. And now here's Waters fakes the toss to Murray. And he just works right behind his uh, center, Greg Hagan, Alex Curtin, and Jesse Alger, the guards, and bowls his way inside the 20 down to about the 17, Matt. Yeah. And then there's a the fake stretch on that fake one. Stretch. And tried to catch him off guard and, and go right up the middle. And uh, Zach worked in there and uh, got a little bit of it back. But it puts us in a third and long situation here. Three-yard run that time for Waters. And we can get a first down yet without scoring. One receiver to the right, that is Edward Thompson. One to the left, and that is Jack Lyman for Dowling. Waters out of the shotgun with Murray behind him. Hand off, or fake handoff to Murray. Over the top he goes into the end zone. The pass is incomplete. Well, Lyman wants a penalty. He's not going to get it. There was contact, and the pass falls incomplete. Yeah, you know, that was pretty good coverage there by uh, number six, four Valley, uh, Parker Marshall. Uh, the play, he was open early. Zach got the ball there to him and went up, and both people went up at the same time and couldn't come down with it. That brings up fourth down for the Maroons. Fourth down and 14. Ball's on the 18-yard line of Valley. 
they seven got, and a half minutes remaining, man. Yeah, fourth and 14 here. This is one of those things where if they had more confidence in their in the, in the snapping and holding on the field this, goal unit. This is the third time Dowling's went for it on fourth down. Waters back to throw on play action. Fires downfield. The pass is knocked away incomplete. Thompson, the intended receiver, and Valley knocks it away. The ball was slightly behind the intended receiver for Dowling, yeah. Edward Thompson. John Shaner on the play there and, and broke on the ball well, broke the play up, and uh, didn't give uh, Thompson a chance to get his hands on it. So Valley will take over first and 10 from their own 18-yard line with 7 minutes, 33 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. Valley 14, Dowling 6. Mark Amadale along with Matt Mandering here in the broadcast booth. John Chido on the Dowling sideline, and we'll go down to John on our Shields sideline report. Johnny? Well, Mark, uh, that holding penalty is just crucial. We put them out of field position, and we took back a touchdown, took points off the board, and you just can't do that. And uh, once we – Dowling Catholics had rhythm, they just uh, uh, been uh, put backwards with uh, penalties and uh, mistakes. So – 13-yard penalty on that hold, and now back to throw as Lombardi fires the ball out. It is caught, and that is Parker Marshall with the catch. And that's Connor Jackman on the play there to get the tackle. A good play by Connor. Was up on that play right away and stopped him for not getting any yards after the catch. Move the ball up to the 23-yard line, gain of five. Marshall's been on both sides of the football tonight. I want to thank Mercy Medical along with Kemen and Dental Associates for support our broadcast tonight here on Iowa Catholic Radio. All right, uh, Bolum, or rather Lombardi back to throw. Bow fires it out, and it's caught on the left side for Valley, and that is Creighton, or check that, Jack Johnson, who's been relatively quiet in this contest for Valley. He makes a nice catch there, and he turns it upfield right around the 26-yard line, gain of three. Yeah, Drew Peterson made a nice play there. He had to run a long ways out there to get that ball and get that play stopped up and for as short a gain as it was because he was out there in space ready to make some damage, and Owen Schultz did a nice job of stopping up the blocker, holding that play inside. All right, third and two now for Valley. I mentioned Drew Peterson lost last year during uh, camp to an ACL injury, rehabbed it, and he gets to start at corner now, or at safety, back to throw is Lombardi, and he's going to be smothered under back at the 25-yard line. May have fell forward up to about the 26. So no gain in the play, and it'll bring up fourth down and two for Valley from their own 26, and the Dowling defense really uh, aggressively bull rush the uh, the quarterback Lombardi. Yeah, Coach Bossom dialed up a blitz there on that play, and I believe it was Drew Peterson again coming on that blitz and uh, forced Bo to step up into the pocket, and then the rest of the line, Connor Krigshauser and uh, – and company, Collins there, were able to make take Lombardi down. Yes, they did. So the punting unit in for Valley. That brings in Cole Peterson, number four. He'll stand back inside his 15-yard line to the 12, and back deep for Dowling will be Matt Stillwell. He stands at his own 45. Good snap, and Peterson's kick is away. It's a wobbly high kick, and it'll be fielded by the Maroons. And that's Stillwell with it. Runs left side, trying to turn the corner, and he's knifed down at the midfield mark. And that'll be Dowling's possession, first and 10 at the 50-yard line as nice tackle on the play by Carson Shelton for the uh, Valley Tigers. Yeah, we had we had a wall set up there, and if Shelton hadn't made a play there, Matt still would have got a few more yards out of that. Uh, and uh, a nice high punt. That was the best punt of the night for their punter there. And But we had, we've had we got momentum going offensively here, and if we can stop uh, the penalties here, we can move the ball on these guys. That is certainly true. Let's go down to our Shields sideline reporter, John Scheidel, bring it in. Well, with 5.24 left in the third quarter, uh, Dowling needs uh, the help with the win because uh, the fourth quarter is going to be tough going with this wind swirling as much as it has been down here. So see if Dowling can get a drive going and uh, w without mistakes and penalties here, Mark. All right, pistol formation, Waters in at quarterback and a little swing pass left side and a caught in the Valley territory. Nice job that time, a little play action. Tegan Johnson with the catch, and they faked the handoff to Murray up the middle, and that, that corralled the uh, Valley defense, and they got Tegan Johnson outside, a little swing pass that a time little by swing Waters. pass, yeah. First time we were able to call Tegan's name tonight, and they makes a nice catch in traffic there and, and a quick eight yards. Down to the 42-yard line of Valley, eight-yard gain that time by Tegan Johnson on the catch, second and two. Waters out of the shotgun, and now he's going to run the uh, play left, trying to get outside the left end, and he's going to be wrestled down right at the point of attack, which was a 42-yard line. No gain will bring up third and two for Dowling. Yeah, he made a nice second effort there to get a yard out of that play. Uh, Valley did a good job of stringing that play out to the right side, 
and uh, Logan Crosman on that right end uh, for the Tigers there strung that play out and gets stopped. All right, we're under five minutes to play here in the third quarter. 14 to six, Valley leads Dowling. Dowling with the third and two from the Valley 42. And now the give is to Murray and he gets the first down across the 40 down to the Tiger 38 yard line. A four yard run right over right guard. He followed Jesse Alger and Ryan Bowles along with the center Greg Hagan on that right side. Yeah, the, the defensive end there, Nick Buttall from the Tigers is wondering where did Jason go because he had him stopped in the backfield and all of a sudden Jason danced right around him and gets first down. Somewhere around that offensive line. It's yeah. just a matter of where. All right, split out wide left. The formation is Matt Stillwell for Dowling, number 17. Read option, back to throw is Waters. Fires downfield for Thompson, and he overthrew him on a post route. Incomplete as the ball goes in the end zone. Touchback. We got a flag down again, and I, I'm going to assume this is ineligible downfield again. Some of those plays are called the line of scrimmage where it's a run pass option. I don't know if, if our offensive line, if some of them aren't getting it communicated to them and they aren't picking up on it. But again, we had an illegal man downfield, an eligible man downfield. And right now, Chuck Britton, the referee, is getting with the Valley coaching staff. And are they going to decline it or accept it? It looks like they're going to decline the penalty or not. Yeah, you know, the last time they accepted it and, and it was ends up being a first and 15 and this time second and 10, I think giving us less opportunities is probably the better of the two options. Well, they're going to accept the penalty, so Dowling nope. is. Yeah. No, they didn't accept it. No. Sorry, 38 yep. yard line, so they declined the penalty. And now a little toss play left side. Here's Murray scampering on the near sideline, and he's knocked out of bounds just around the 35 yard line. May have gotten to the 33 to see where they spot him out of bounds. A short gain that time of five. Yep, we got half of it back, and so we're halfway to the. To the 28 there on the 33-yard line. And again, that little toss sweep action, getting Jason outside in the boundary. So they'll put the ball down at the 32-yard line, it looks like. So gain a six by Murray. Dowling now taking its time. If 10 seconds remaining on the play clock, two re receivers right, one to the left. One to the left is Stillwell. And now here's a snap, and the quarterback will keep it, and that is Zach Waters. And you know, the old sweep play to the left side, and he couldn't get outside, and he's hit and oh. driven down at the 31 for a gain of one. Carson Shelton made a nice play right there. He knifed through there. It looked like Zach Waters had room to run into that gap there, and then Shelton came through there and made a great play for the Tigers. I want to thank Skeffington's Formal Wear, along with To Me and Sons, for supporting our broadcast here on Iowa Catholic Radio. also want to thank the fine folks at Mercy Medical and Kemen for supporting our broadcast as Dowling now facing a fourth and four and the Maroons going for it Again, fourth time tonight. You know, Coach Wilson has confidence in his defense. You know, he's going to call a timeout here, I think, and uh, think about this one more time. All right, we're going to take a one-minute break with the score. Valley 14, Dowling Catholic 6 from Drake Stadium in Des Moines. Three and a half minutes remaining in the third quarter. Back after this one-minute break on Iowa Catholic Radio and the Central Iowa Sports Network. Here's to everyone who believes in competition and good sportsmanship. Who knows it's not about the trophies or the medals, but rather the lessons learned. For those who understand, it's not whether you win or lose, just that you give your best. So go ahead, place them up, take the field, have fun, and play. For the experience, for the memories, for the love of the game, Shields. This is Iowa, and here, we don't just dream of a better tomorrow, of a smarter way to do business or live, of perseverance and progress. We inspire it in others. We challenge the conventional, reimagine what it means to be better, and then dare ourselves to make it great. This is Iowa, oh, and here, we don't just dream, we make history. Yes, now we're gonna re recap this. And we're back here at Drake Stadium. Dowling going for it on fourth down. And they toss play to Jason Murray. Get, gets left side, turns the corner, fumbles the football. And Dowling's right guard, Jesse Alger, on the recovery of Matt Maindring. And an injury on the play to the Valley uh, 
player. I don't know if it's uh, if he cramped up. He's being attended to by one of his own teammates, which may not be the best thing. But right. the training staff out there. But what a play that was! When you're when you're six five, three forty, and show that hustle, that shows you something right there. That's that's a and that's why he's a captain. You know, Jesse showed a great great did a great job there. First of all, a great run by by Jason. Uh, making something out of nothing. There's a senior wanting to get a first down, and then Jesse hustling over to get on top of that football. Let's go down to our Shields sideline reporter. That is John Chido. And, Johnny, give us an update. I'm trying to see what number for the Valley uh, player that's down with the injury. I believe it's number 20, 28. That's Carson Shelton, if that's the case. And it was a nice cutback by Jason Murray. I mean, he was going to the outside and had a cutback, made a nice cut, and uh, got – caught between three Valley defenders. The ball went loose, and Jesse Alger made a nice recovery for a first down. That's a great way to make a first down, huh, Mark? It is, and, uh, you know, I don't know how they share that statistically, uh, Matt, because Murray carried it for about five or six yards, and the ball squibbled, uh, got loose, and then Alger right on top of it, and Alger did a great job of uh, coming up with it. And so does he get part of that uh, rushing yards there, I, I, I think? No, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't, think, I don't think Jesse's going to be in, in, this, in, the, in the book there for <laughs> yards rushing. So the Maroons pick up a first down. Line of scrimmage will be the 21-yard line, and Dowling with the first down. And the uh, injured Valley player up under his own power and walking off the field. As we mentioned, it was Carson Shelton, the uh, junior linebacker for the Tigers. He'll go out for at least a play, and I bet he'll be right back yeah, in I there. I think he'll be back on the field. So first down, Maroons as they have the ball at the Valley 21, trailing 14 to six. And now quarterback will keep it, and that's Waters and nowhere to go. He was just looking for any kind of hole in that offensive line as he had two receivers right, one to the left, and he keeps it for no gain. Yeah, little indecision right there got him and uh, hesitated behind the line of scrimmage and nothing opened up for him and, and ended up just covering up on the football there. So it'll bring up second down and 10, Maroons. Boy, they've been in this uh, area a lot here in the second half and haven't been able to punch anything th through, and that's a credit to Valley's red zone defense as the Maroons are approaching the Bows in the Floors red zone on a read option. Waters with it. little flare pass out of the backfield, same one they ran earlier to Tegan Johnson. He overthrew him incomplete, and that'll stop the clock with 235 remaining in the third quarter and Dowling trailing 14-6. to six. It's One of those plays that was well designed and just a little excitement there. Couldn't get the ball to him and, and he was out in space. I don't think he would have got the first down, but it made it close. So it'll bring up third down for Dowling. Third and 10 from the 21-yard line. Bruins looking to their sideline and getting signals sent in from their offensive coaching staff. Ryan Van Veen, Craig McLean, Assistant coaches for head coach Tom Wilson. Seems like every time we've gotten down here, we've been in the third and long situation, the third and 12. and I'm Losing track, but I know we've had fourth down four times tonight. First well, first time was in the first series, and the Maroons went for it and made it. Now back to throws Waters on play action. Fires to his left, and the pass incomplete. To, ball got, uh, yeah, that ball got tipped at the line of scrimmage. Valley was able to get a hand on it, and uh, the ball fluttered down there short of the intended receiver. That was still well the intended receiver on the near sideline, so it'll bring up fourth down. Dowling at the, uh, the ball back to the 22-yard line, so it'll bring up fourth and 11 for the Maroons. And it looks like we're going to go for it. Don't see the uh, field goal unit coming in. I don't see Bombers group coming out. They're going to go for it again. Fifth time Dowling has went for it on fourth down, and I think they've made it twice, and Valley has stuffed them twice, so we'll see. Fourth and 11 Maroons, 2.30 remaining fourth quarter from the Valley 22. Shotgun yeah, snap, and now penalty flags down. Movement on the right side of our line of scrimmage right there, just a little a little tweak on his foot and on if you the look, right tackle. If you look at Waters, he was looking to the left side, and that's where Stillwell and uh, Edward Thompson were lined up, and that'll move the Maroons back five yards to see what Coach Wilson decides here. Yeah, see if this changes his line of thinking here a little bit. Looks like he's going to stay with it here. I'll move the ball back to the Valley 27 on the uh, procedure call. And the Maroons will stay with the same package with Stillwell and Thompson staying in the ball game. And Thompson will go to the right side along with Colin Cook and Jack Lyman. Three receivers right and one receiver to the left. That's, that's Stillwell. 
Waters, long count, play action. Back to throw he goes. Fires left side. The pass is caught inside the 15. And he'll be shy of the first down. Oh, wait, he still he kept fight. fighting. Yeah, he's got to get down to oh, about yeah. the 11. And oh, that got... marker's in the wrong spot, I see. Yeah, he's got to get down to the 11. He stopped right about the 13-yard line, so Valley will take over on downs. So He showed a great second effort there after he, he sure got did. after he um, caught the ball there and stayed battling. Uh, and Waters showed some poise in the pocket there, too. He had some pressure and got the ball out there and, and just a little bit short. So the Tigers will take over first and 10. Let's go down to the Dowling sideline for the Shield sideline report. That's John Chido. Johnny? Well, Mark, i got to bring my coaching uh, hat on here. If you're a receiver, don't you run to the stick to get the first down. But it was a great catch, nice effort. We just came up a couple yards short there. Yeah, they certainly did, and that's a good point there, Coach. And I'm sure that will be uh, visited with as Valley takes over at the 12-yard line. Dowling needed to get to the 11 for a first down. And a uh, nice effort that time by the Maroon receiver. But nonetheless, the Valley offense on the field, 217 remaining here in the third quarter. And now they hand off the Fugate, and he tries to turn the corner. This time they run outside left end, and he's tripped up right about the 13, maybe the 14-yard line for a gain of two. Yeah, Hummel out there again, uh, running in his alley to the ball and uh, makes a great stop on Fugate there, holding him to just a one-yard gain. Uh, how many snaps have they had in this half? I think they've only had the ball twice, haven't they? Uh, they were Valley? three and out in their first possession, three and out in their second, and that is uh, this is the first yeah. possession of the third uh, time the Valley's had the yeah. ball. So uh, gain of one that time by Fugate, second and nine Tigers. Read option, and Lombardi keeps the football, and he ran right into the uh, Dowling defensive line. They blow the play dead. Nice job that time. Was that Hummel? I can't quite tell. I got He's, got, he's turned on me there a little bit. I believe it is Hummel again. <laughs> Ran right into Levi and stuffed the play. Or Max Bay. That might have been Max Bay there at the end. Uh, he ran into a whole crowd there in the middle. Uh, Lombardi did, and Max Bay finished it off. So loss of one on the play. It'll bring up third down and 10 for the Valley Tigers. Line of scrimmage is the Tiger 12-yard line. They'll send out three receivers right. Valley going left to right in front of us. North to south here at Drake Stadium. Back to throws Lombardi. Swings it out backside. Caught by Fugate. Screen pass. He's got the first down and more. He's in the Dowling secondary. And he's tripped up just outside the 40-yard line. Well-developed play that time by the Tigers. The play was designed to go right. They threw back across the green and went left. And Keel was injured for Dowling. That's uh, yeah. Jack Keel, the Dowling linebacker. Yeah, Keel did a great job of getting back crosser and saved a touchdown. And uh, I don't know if it's his elbow or his, his shoulder there as he comes off the field. Play went for 30 yards and a Valley first down at the Tiger 42-yard line with 45 seconds of game clock running here in the third quarter. Once again, Valley leading Dowling 14-6. to We're at Drake Stadium. Mark Amadale along with Matt Maindering and our sideline reporter tonight is John Chido. Now on play action, Lombardi back to throw. Has time, steps up, fires over the middle. The pass is caught, caught for a first down, and that is Nate Wilcoxon, who's been big. He drags tacklers inside the 20 and stopped around the 15-yard line of Dowling. Yeah, he's a threat out of that backfield, and uh, he is able to get loose and get in coverage, and he's got a great set of hands, and then once he gets his hands on the ball, he's a load to bring down. 43-yard gain as Wilcoxon came up with a big catch, caught it around the 30-yard line and just drug tacklers down to the 15-yard line. And that is a huge play for Valley to get themselves into the uh, red zone of Dowling. And they're going to let the play clock run out here. They're going to let the quarter run out and get the wind behind their back. And uh, they were able to flip the field here right at the end of the third quarter. Yes, they were. That'll, that'll wrap up the third quarter. Final seconds ticking off. The clock, and it's Valley 14, Dowling 6. We move the fourth quarter. Valley will have the wind, and they'll have a first down at the 15-yard line when we return here on the Central Iowa Sports Network and Iowa Catholic Radio. Why do I look for the seal? It's a cost. Whether I'm buying a car, hiring a contractor, finding a tax preparer, or an honest mechanic, the Better Business Bureau seal means this business meets high standards. When I see the seal, I know I'll get what I pay for. No more taking chances and no more worries. And I feel good about supporting local businesses. My life is so much easier knowing I can always trust BBB accredited businesses. It pays to look for the seal. See for yourself at bbb.org backslash Iowa. 
Best deals of the year at Schottenkirk Ford Indianola. During the Ford Summer Sales Event in Indianola, get 0% for 60 months, plus up to $10,000 off select new 18 Ford F-150 XLT. 0% for 72 months, plus $1,000 on select new 18 Edge. Escape and Explorers. You get all of the rebates, incentives, and discounts, plus more for your trade. 0% for 60 months, plus up to $10,000 off select new F-150s won't last. Only at Schottenkirk Ford Indianola. SchottenkirkFord.com. Building a strong community doesn't happen overnight. It takes a vision for the future, the ability to turn a challenge into a success, and individuals who inspire new generations of growth. Greater Des Moines has done a lot of growing over the years, and so have we. At Brick Gentry Law, your success is something that we create together. Thank you for making us a part of your community. Thank you for 50 years. Uh, shoestring tackle that time by the Dowling defensive end right at the 15-yard line for no gain. Yeah, again, Levi Hummel on the bottom of the pile as we've called his number a lot tonight. And then Ryan Adam coming from his safety position to make uh, to finish the playoff. So Valley now with a second down and 10 from the Dowling 15-yard line. Tigers lead it 14-6. We move to the fourth quarter here at Drake Stadium as head coach... Gary Swenson calling the plays for the Valley offense. They'll have two receivers right, one to the left, and their tight end will be on the right side. The quarterback is Lombardi, and that is a Bo Lombardi, and he's back to throw, being chased, throws it away in the end zone, and the pass is caught out of bounds, incomplete. Nice job that time by Lombardi. Boy, he had pressure that time from Hummel and one other defender, and but Peterson. he launched in the end zone, and it was a catchable ball. Yeah. Unfortunately, it was out of bounds for the Tigers. Yeah. He Lombardi took a shot right there, yes, right at did. the end, but he made a nice throw into the corner of the end zone and just missed his receiver, just carried him out of bounds. And this is a, you know, could be a two-possession swing here, uh, Matt. If Valley doesn't score the six points, they have Cole Peterson, who's pretty good from uh, with his field goals. He was two for three last week against Southeast Polk, including a 43-yarder, and he's pretty accurate. So big time here for the Maroons as they trail 14-6 to six to Valley, and it's third and nine. Third and nine for the Tigers from the 15-yard line of Dowling. Back to throw Lombardi. Looks left, fires left, and he fires in the end zone. The pass is incomplete. There's some incidental contact there between the Dowling defender and the Valley receiver broken up. Bring up fourth down. Connor Jackman did a nice job out there in coverage. They had isolated him on the left side there, and uh, he made a nice play, a little bumping as they were going down the field, but incidental, and uh, we forced a, a field goal. So Peterson will be in to attempt the field goal. They'll spot it at the 22-yard line on the left hash. So this will be a 32-yard line, 32-yard field goal by Cole Peterson. The holder will be Braden Ketcher. And the long snapper is Zach Shaner, the center. So Peterson lines it up. 11.07 remaining here in the fourth quarter, 14 to 6 Valley. And yet three, the field goal is up, and it is good. From 32 yards out, Valley extends its lead over Dowling to 17 to 6. With 11.03 remaining fourth quarter, we'll take a one-minute break here on Iowa Catholic Radio and the Central Iowa Sports Network. Hi, I'm Chris with Fireplace Superstore. It's August and time for our early end-of-season sale. Groups that we have too many of are marked way down, like this Sun Villa group, $1,000 off to $32.99. Or this North Cape Avant group, Sofa or Sectional, 20% off. Or this great Lloyd Flanders Charleston group, $1,000 off to $32.99. The best weather for outdoor furniture is still ahead of us, and we still have Iowa's largest selection. Miss your hometown clothing store, the one that had it all, everything to get the work done all in one place? GNL Clothing is your hometown Iowa store. Stop in and see us, or we're only a click or phone call away. Family owned for nearly a century. GNL Clothing, 1801 Ingersoll, Des Moines. GNL Clothing, your size, your style, we've got it all. And we're back here at Drake Stadium as Valley extends its lead over Dowling 17 to 6 on Cole Peterson's 32 yard field goal as a uh, the Tigers march from their own 12-yard line all the way down to the Dowling Territory and settle for the field goal after the big play of that drive by uh, 
Wilcoxon with a 43-yard catch. Let's go down to the Dowling sideline. That's where uh, John Chida was at tonight on our Shields sideline report. Johnny? Well, Mark, I got an update on Jack Keel. Looks like he's done for the game. It's a uh, separated shoulder. He's got his arm in a sling, so we will not see him the rest of the night. Yeah, uh, Coach and I noticed that, Johnny. We didn't know if, what the, the injury was, and they took the helmet away from him. That's usually a sign that you're done. And now Dowling with the first down from their own 20-yard line. Back to the ground. That's Jason Murray, and he gets across the 30, and he's got the first down. And, Matt, we were talking about that in the break. Uh, Maroons were going to the air a lot in their last drives. Now they go back to the ground. Yeah, trying to establish Jason on the ground. He's, he, you know, he's the kind of kid who can make this the dynamics of this game change in a hurry with one burst. So we'll see there, right there, even over Ryan Bowles and Jesse Alger. And first and 10 Maroons from their own 31-yard line. And before the play gets underway, we've got a penalty flag down. And this is uncharacteristic of what we've seen from Dowling and uh, another penalty. So it's a procedure call against Dowling, and I'll move the Maroons back five yards, back to the 26-yard line. It'll be first and 15 from there. We want to thank Ashworth Vision, along with Construction Professionals and Dental Associates for supporting our broadcast tonight here on Iowa Catholic Radio. Our thanks to Mercy Medical and Kemen. First and 15 Maroons, line of scrimmage is the Dowling 25-yard line. Handoff goes to uh, Murray, and... Jason tries to go right over center, and he's hit and swallowed up there at the 26-yard line for no gain. Yeah, there are a number of Tigers there on that one, and we've got a man down for Valley at this time. I don't know if it's same uh, the same kid with the cramps from four. Not sure, but uh, that'll stop the clock with uh, 10.37 remaining here in the fourth quarter. Dowling trails 17-6 to to Valley. Both teams in the top five this week. Valley at number five. The Maroons at number one. And we're going to take a well, we're gonna take a one-minute break. No, they get him up. He's up under his own power, and it looks like it's cramps, and that's the good news. Mm -hmm. And he'll be, that young man will be helped to the sideline. I believe it's. I believe it's um, Carson Shelton again. It looks like it is. It's uh, Jersey's kind of rolled up under him. Yeah, him, but and I, you know, that once that cramp starts, it's tough to get rid of it, and he tried to come back out in the series and make an effort again, and it just went away on him again. And are the officials going to play on, or we've got a uh, official timeout? Let's see. Nope, we're going to go back to action. So we'll keep it here along our network stations, both CISN.TV and Iowa Catholic Radio. Mark Amadillo, Matt Maindring, and John Chido on the Dowling sideline as... It'll bring up second down and 14 now for Dowling. Back on the 26-yard line, Murray with no gain in the last play. And the Dowling quarterback is Zach Waters. And Waters hands off a little toss play to Murray right side. Stays in bounds across the 40 and bowls his way down across the 42-yard line. Good enough for a maroon first down. He needed to get to the 41, and he did. Yeah, that was that was a lot of Jason Murray right there. And, and he it was used just, that boundary yeah. as, a, as an asset there. He does a great <laughs> job. You know, I was talking to Coach Wilson today. He said he's, he likes playing on this field because he's got the college hashes. And that gives him a couple more feet when, he's running, when he's running to the sideline. And That's Jason true. just does a great job in that space. So first down, Dowling from their own 42. Back to throw Waters. Throws a post pattern into triple coverage. The ball is tipped. and caught by Thompson inside the 20. The ball was tipped by the Valley defender right into the hands of Edward Thompson. Maroons catch a break. First down, Dowling at the 20 of Valley. There were three Valley Tigers there and one Maroon, Ed Thompson. It, Drew Jurek had that ball in his hands, tipped it up in the air, and it lands in Thompson's hands, and that's the break we were looking for. 38-yard reception that time. First down, Dowling at the 20. You're right, that is a big break. They actually spot at the 19-yard line, so a 39-yard reception. And now Waters gives to Murray, works between the tackles. He's hit and driven down at the 15 for a gain of four. Brings up second and six Maroons from the 15 of Valley. Yeah, again, Jason behind that offensive line, and they were steamrolling down there, and he's dancing behind them. And how many times can we say that in one night as he's running forward <laughs> right up the middle? He's just using that wall. If you can find him, good luck to you. Yeah. All right, Connor Eibach split out wide left. He's number 26 for Dowling. Edward Thompson split out wide right. He's used a tight end on the right. And the give is to, well, read option handoff, or rather Waters keeps it. He picks up a first down 
Heck, he had me fooled. I thought he gave it to Jason Murray, and Jason kind of stopped the line of scrimmage, and Waters takes it around left end. First down, Dowling, first and goal as we're in the Bozen red zone at the eight-yard line. You know, and that's where Zach Waters excels a little bit there. That, that's a couple times we've run that play, and he's starting to get the hang of it now. Again, he's getting the feel for that play and how to run it and how to show that option, and then gets first down. Maroons are in the Bozen red zone. Whatever your message may be, say more with Bozen as Maroons at the first and goal at the eight-yard line of Valley. And off, or rather, snap goes to Waters, tries to go around left end, and he puts his head down out of bounds at the five. Every second and goal from the five is Zach Waters picks up three yards. Zach's got to watch how Jason does that when he gets in that sideline because he <laughs> gets, to that, gets to that boundary and just gets out a little bit too quick there. Jason's real good at sneaking inside there. But that's a good run by Zach, and it gives us a – Second and goal from the seven. All right, two receivers to the right for Dowling. Thompson and Stillwell split out wide to the right. And split out wide to the left is Connor Eibach and Connor Cook. Oh, and a ball off. Picked passed off. in the end zone. It's intercepted by Valley. The Tigers with a, a pick after the fake handoff and a quick toss by Waters. And the Tigers... Intercepted, and they're going to spot him down right at the three-yard line. Yeah, John Shaner there for the Tigers. Read that play, was watching Zach the whole way, and stepped right in front of the receiver, and uh, that's a costly turnover. Back been, at the two-yard line, yeah. Matt, of Valley. So well, now it falls back on the defense. You know, one of the things during that last break, I saw um, Jack Keo and it shows what kind of a kid that young man is. That Chris Osley, a junior, is going in for him on this series. And uh, he was there working with him, talking to him, going through the, the reads and things like that to make sure he understood what his responsibilities are here as we start this series. All right, let's go down to, the, for, to our Shields sideline reporter, John Chido. Tough break for the Maroon offense. They get all the way down to the three and turn it over. It sure was, Mark. It was a great play by the down, or the Valley linebacker, Shanner. He, he didn't even move, and, and the receiver ran right in, right where he was, and the ball was thrown his way. And now made on, a nice play. Yeah, and on first down, Lombardi from his own two-yard line fires the ball out, and it's caught right about the 30-yard line. First down, Valley, and that's Ryan New with the catch, and that might be his first or if not second catch of the night, and that gets Valley out of a deep hole. They go from their own two-yard line up to the, their own 32-yard line, pick up a 30. Yeah, Coach Winston there rolling the dice a little bit and going calling for the one-on-one -on -one coverage out there on Owen Schultz, and Schultz was in good coverage position and uh, just a nice catch. Well-placed ball by yeah. Lombardi. you got to give the nice kids credit. Yep. All right, first and 10, Valley from their own 32-yard line, 8.30 remaining here in the fourth quarter. Valley 17, Dowling 6, Maroons turn over in their red zone. Handoff goes to Fugate, and he's found the tough – Tough going there, maybe a yard up to the 33 or 4 yard line. It'll bring up second down and long for Valley. Yeah, Connor Krigshauser, and uh, again, that one looked like Chris Osley getting in there for his um, first play in there. I think we're going to see a lot of Fugate here in the next little bit. Yeah, this will be, uh, you watch that play clock. It'll be inside five, uh, five second mark of the play clock before Valley snaps it. And we're going to see Fugate and maybe the other tailback uh, in there. Now, no, Lombardi back to the, the air, air, fires it out, caught first down at the 48-yard line, and the, the Tigers run the old square-out pattern, and they pick up the first down. Nice job that time by Valley, and that's Parker, Parker Marshall Mar with the catch. Yeah, Parker Marshall with the catch, Owen Shields in coverage, and uh, that was good again, a good pass and catch there. Well-designed play by the Tigers, and, and they are – being aggressive right now. Well, they're being balanced. That's a 13-yard yeah. reception yeah. after uh, New caught a 30-yard pass. So they've got 43 yards of passing yards in this drive that started back at the two. First down, Lombardi and Valley. And the read option they give is to the tailback, and that's Fugate. Bounces off defender at the 40, still on his feet, deep in Dowling territory and run out of bounds right around the 15-yard line as he bounced off of Thompson and finally run out of bounds at the 15. Yeah, run out of bounds by Adam there, and that's one of the things that that passing, two passing plays in a row, or not in a row, but two passing plays there, uh, gets the defense sitting back a little bit, and then it makes room for Fugate to run through and pop off a big run. Certainly does. All the way down to the Dowling 17 is where they spot him out of bounds. So first down Valley, a 30-yard pass reception that time, or rather run by Fugate. Matches a 30-yard pass earlier in the drive by New. So it's first and 10 Valley at the Dowling 17, and Lombardi inside handoff to the fullback. 
And that's Nate Wilcoxon, the junior fullback at 205 pounds, number 45 with the carry. Yeah, and that time they um, went to Wilcoxon with the handoff. They'd sooner pass to him and let him or let him block. But that time he did did give him the ball and it's about a yard. Yeah, time-consuming drive here for Valley. Their, their passes have been caught. That keeps the clock running. The only time the clock stopped was for the first down. And right now the Tigers at the 17. Wilcoxon with no gain on the play. Valley letting that play clock run under 10 before they snap it. And regardless of what happens here, they've flipped the field again. And they've got us, we have to go a long way as they put the ball back in our end zone. Yeah, offset eye formation, handoff goes to Fugate. And he's uh, wrestled down at the 15-yard line, gain of two. Pretty good play there by Chris Olsley and uh, Nate Collins in the middle of the field there and, and uh, was able to stop him. Dowling defense has played tough tonight. Jack Schatz, Nate Collins, Connor Kriekhauser uh, up front, along with Max Bay, Drew Peterson, Levi Hummel, and Jack Keel, and Michael Keel, the linebackers and defensive end, and Owen Schultz and Quentin Wellmarker, the corners, and Ryan Adam at uh, safety. Those have been the 11 on the field. We've had a few others in there and been out there a lot. They've uh, given up the big play in this drive. Back to throw Lombardi, throws to his left, fires it out, and it's caught, and that is Jack Johnson with the catch. Right around the 10-yard line, he'll stay in bounds for a gain of five. Quentin Wellmaker in coverage there to get the stop, but uh, again, Valley staying very balanced on this drive as they've been moving it down the field. But it does bring up a fourth down situation here. And the last time they were here, they kicked field goal, and uh, they've got a good field goal kicker. Fourth and three for the Tigers at the Dowling 10-yard line. Obviously, got to get to the seven for a first down. Right. And they're taking a lot of time. We may see a timeout called by Coach well, Swenson. I'm wondering why the, the play clock didn't start there. We may hear Maybe. that from the uh, referee. It's a timeout on the field. We'll take a one-minute break with the score. Valley 17, Dowling 6 from Drake Stadium in Des Moines here in the fourth quarter. You're listening to Dowling Catholic Football on the Iowa Catholic Radio Network and the Central Iowa Sports Network. Moms typically get to make a majority of the health care decisions for their family. That can be a lot of pressure, but not for me, because I know the choice is ours. For medical tests like MRIs, x-rays, CAT scans, and of course mammograms, ask your doctor to refer you to Iowa Radiology. They work around our hectic schedules, they're the best at what they do, and they're so great with my family. They truly care, and it shows. Visit iowaradiology.com or call to schedule an appointment. Iowa Radiology, our focus is your good health. The value of staying active cannot be overlooked in our lives or our young athletes. However, high intensity workouts come with the risk of injury. If you or your child have sustained a sports injury, Select Physical Therapy in conjunction with Iowa Ortho are here to help with two convenient walk-in locations. From diagnosis through recovery, you'll be put directly into the hands of experts who will evaluate and treat your sports related injury. Call us today for an evaluation. And welcome back to Drake Stadium. Mark Amadil, Matt Maindring, and John Chido as Valley leads at 17-6. Tigers look like they're going to attempt a field goal, but right now referee Chuck Britton in a conversation with Valley head coach Gary Swenson. Let's go down to the Dowling sideline. And, John, what else is going on on the, on the Maroon sideline? Oh, uh, we're just, We were just, uh, just talking about whether they go for it or kick a field goal, but if they kick the field goal, we have to score twice anyway, whether they miss it or not. So, um, you know, it's going to make it a little bit difficult if they do put three points on the board, but going for two and they kick the field goal, then we'd have to score two touchdowns. But still, we stopped them from getting in the end zone, which is a big stop for us. Yeah, it's a 27-yard field goal that will be attempted. And now I think the discussion was maybe about the play clock because that was a, uh, kind of the point of emphasis before we went to break, Matt. Yeah, they never started the clock there, and then Coach Winston ended up calling the timeout. And I'm unclear about – what all transpired there? Why? Because otherwise he would let the clock run down farther and let more time run off the clock. Now they're going to wind the clock. All right. Five minutes, 35 seconds remaining fourth quarter. Valley leading 17-6 to six over Dowling here in the fourth quarter. 27-yard field goal by Peterson from the left hash. Ball is high enough, long enough, and it is good. So the Tigers now lead it 20-6 to six over Dowling. We'll take a break and be back with 526 remaining fourth quarter. Valley 20 and Dowling 6 here on Iowa Catholic Radio and the Central Iowa Sports Network. We might not always know what the day will bring, but some things are certain. The sun will rise and your lights will go on. 
That's because at MidAmerican Energy, we're obsessively, relentlessly committed to providing you energy when and where you need it, to connecting with you and keeping our communities safe and strong. Because the most important thing we put our energy into is you. We're obsessively, relentlessly at your service. Hi, Ron here, head coach of Westside Auto Pros. When your car's on the injured reserve, you want to get it back in the game as soon as possible. I know that. That's why you need to bring it here to Westside Auto Pros. I have a team of experts that can fix almost every automotive injury. Whether it's a fractured joint, a brake, or if your car just got its bell rung, no problem. We can even do a complete physical on your car to make sure it's game ready for the entire season. So bring your car to Westside Auto Pros and we'll get it back in the starting lineup in no time. Hey, you guys are dogging it back here. Let's move it, move it, move it. And we're back here at Drake Stadium after uh, Valley takes the ball from their own two-yard line. They get it all the way down to the Dowling 10-yard line, and they settle for a Cole Peterson 27-yard field goal. And uh, the kickoff by Peterson goes into the end zone, so the Dowling offense, Matt Maynard, will take over first and 10 from their own 20. Maroon's down by two scores, uh, but they only have five and a half minutes remaining to uh, do anything about it. Yeah, they're going to have to... Dig in the bag of tricks here and see what they can come up with some plays. And we just haven't been able. The passing game has been off tonight at several different levels. And uh, that play was. Uh, All right, Zach Waters in at quarterback. Yeah. And his pass to the near side to Thompson incomplete. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's been Valley's defensive. They really prepared very job. well. Yeah, they've been disruptive back there. They've tipped a couple passes and uh, and have made both Zachs run around back there and not, not get comfortable back there. And, and we haven't had an open receiver outside of the one pass play for the, the long run. That is true. And it'll bring up second and ten Maroons as Waters back in at quarterback. Zach Waters has went most of the distance tonight. He's got most of the stamps as Dowling uh, shared that quarterback duties. Waters fires at left side. The pass is caught by Lyman, but maybe for a gain up to the 25-yard line for a gain of five, it'll bring up third and five for the Maroons. Yeah, I think that's the young man that's gone out a couple times, um, Carson Shelton on the play there and uh, made a good stop. He's had uh, problems with cramps tonight during the game. Game clock continues to run. Five minutes remaining, fourth quarter. Valley 20, Dowling 6. Back to throw. Waters has time. Swing pass right side. Caught by Jason Murray. Breaks a move, and he gets downfield up to the 25-yard line for the line of scrimmage. No gain. A little swing pass. He caught it at the 20 and had to get back to the 25-yard yeah. line, just to get back to the line of scrimmage. Valley had that well read. Yeah, they did. They had great defensive coverage there and didn't give Zach any options to throw it except for it would dump off to Jason, and Jason made the first um, but wasn't able to make the second guy miss and stops for no game. All right, Baumler in the punt for the Maroons. He'll stand back at around his 10-yard line, and the Valley Tigers will go with a single safety back at the 42-yard line of the Tigers with game clock running at 4.15. Here in the fourth quarter, here's a punt by Baumler. It's a wobbled high kick and fair catch signal for by Valley, and that is uh, John Shaner. And the Tigers will have it first and 10 from their own 42-yard line. And next week, both Dowling and Valley will be involved in action for the Valley Tigers. They'll be at home at, at Valley Stadium next Friday as fifth-ranked Valley hosts number nine Cedar Rapids Kennedy. That'll be televised on the Central Iowa Sports Network, CISN.TV. 7.30 kickoff for that contest. And Dowling will be on the road next Friday night as uh, Dowling travels to number three, Johnston. We'll have the call on Iowa Catholic Radio. Mr. Maynard, you're going to miss that. You're going to spend some time with your wife. I know you've got some tickets somewhere, and we're going to bring back out of the, uh, well, the retired person, Mr. Dave Marcouli, is going to sit in with us next Friday night. Yeah, make sure his voice still works. Oh, I'm, I'm sure he's waiting right now as Valley now from their own 42-yard line with the handoff, and they'll get it to Creighton Mitchell, their second to running back, and Mitchell with a nice run up across the 45 up to the 46. Yeah, it looks like Drew Peterson on the tackle there, and you see some guys, rightly so, trying to strip the ball now and trying to create that turnover, and when you do that, you don't get those stops right at the line of scrimmage. You end up dragging along with the guy for a little bit. So Mitchell will gain a four to bring up second and six. Valley just taking their time, leading 20 to six, dialing down two scores. The 330 remaining here in the fourth quarter. Both Dowling and Valley have two timeouts at their disposal. Now oh. here is a handoff left side and as he gets around left end, the tailback. And let's see, that's Mitchell again. And he gets up near midfield for a gain of four. Looks like Ryan Adam on the stop there. A 
along with um, Levi Hummel. So a gain of four that time for Mitchell, and they just grind it out here. They're going to use all the play clock right now. They're going to let that thing run down. We've got 257 left. This yeah. is a big play right here. We need to stop right here. Yeah, bring up third down and two for the for Valley at the Dow at the 50 yard line. Offset eye formation. Lombardi at quarterback under center, and the give is the tailback Mitchell. And he's stacked stop. up. Yeah, at, great play. At the line of scrimmage for no gain. Again, Levi Hummel and Ryan Adam on the stop there for That's, no gain. You know, we we get an opportunity to fill out the MVP ballot tonight for the uh, uh, the rivalry game, and uh, we're gonna our our nomination is Levi Hummel. Rightly so for Dowling, and uh, as we yeah. represent the Dowling side of things, and uh, rightly so, Levi will get our MVP vote. And, or we're we supposed to not tell him who we voted for. I don't know. There's <laughs> there's no instructions on here. It's the number, name, and team. You just let the cat out of the bag, right? I could have, but that's our vote. That doesn't mean it's uh, it doesn't yeah, mean it's final. There's several over media here. Oh, I don't know okay. what BJ is going to do with MediaCom and uh, Trent <laughs> with. Uh, uh, station down the uh, aisle. You can bail water as much as you want <laughs> there, Mark. I don't know if it's going to work. You know what, Matt? It's time to take a break. <laughs> yeah. And here's a, they're picking up our votes now. We'll take a one minute break. It's Valley 20, Dowling 6, with 2.01 to play in the fourth quarter. Back in one minute from Drake Stadium in Des Moines on Iowa Catholic Radio and the Central Iowa Sports Network. The other guys, they think they know what special means. At Godfather's Pizza, we do special, and we do it better. We add the tea. The Godfather Specialty Pizza with your name on it. Classic combo, all meat combo, hot stuff, taco, yeah, even veggie and more. All of them piled high with the best toppings and 100% real cheese. Treat yourself special. Order specialty pizzas from Godfather's Pizza. There's no doubt about it. Saving feels great. At MidAmerican Energy, we love saving too. Saving the environment by supporting tree planting, which improves air quality. Saving money by investing in wind energy, which keeps rates low. And saving you energy by providing tips to help make your home more energy efficient. Which means you can take those savings and put your energy into having fun. Saving definitely feels great. So does being obsessively, relentlessly at your service. 50-yard punt. And welcome back to Drake Stadium. Mark Amadale, Matt Maindering, and John Chido after the punt by Valley's Cole Peterson goes into the end zone, a 50-yard punt with no return. And Dowling will have it first and 10 from their own 20. Let's go down to our Shields sideline reporter, and that's John Chido. John, give us an update from the Dowling sideline tonight. Well, it's it's been kind of uh, stagnant here in the last couple minutes as this ball game is getting, getting away from Dowling Catholic. But, uh, you know, they're going to go down fighting, and these kids are not giving up. And uh, we'll see what happens here with this drive. All right, the Maroons are the first down at their own 20-yard line and back to throw. The pass is caught by Thompson. That is Waters he was hit at quarterback. Out of bounds. And he did. Nice yep. job by uh, job Edward by Thompson. Thompson. There, once he caught the ball to get out of bounds, nice throw by Zach Waters out there to get him in, and uh, move the move the chains a little bit here. Move the stick, not the chain yet. <laughs> move the uh, down marker up to the 24-yard line. Gain of four by Thompson. And bring up second and six Maroons. Final minute. 50 seconds on the game clock. Back to throw waters for the Maroons. Fires left side. The pass is caught out of the backfield. That is Murray. And Jason is hit and dropped. Nice yeah. tackle that time in the open field by the Tigers. Yeah, Bracken Cobb there for the Tigers did exactly what he's been coached to do and stayed out there in coverage on Jason on that little flare pattern and was able to stop him for a loss. And a loss of two on the play as Murray with the catch. And it brings up third down eight for the Maroons. Waters back to throw. Fires left side. The pass is caught out of bounds, and that's a first down for Jack Lyman. Nice catch that time up to the 33-yard line by Jack, 11-yard gain. Yeah, you know, and earlier um, John Chido on the sideline talked about running to the sticks and getting to make sure he had the first down, and that is exactly what Lyman did right there, ran past the stick and got the first down. Well, the Maroons will have their six-game winning streak snapped tonight as Valley with the final minute 10 remaining. Waters back to throw. Lost it downfield for Thompson. He overthrew him at midfield incomplete. And uh, Gary Swenson and his uh, coaching staff put a pretty good game plan in. Randy Rebarger, the veteran defensive coordinator for Coach Swenson, they put a great package in, holding Dowling right now to just one touchdown. Maroons missed the extra point. 
And uh, when you can do that to a team that's uh, come off five state titles, uh, you've, done, you've done your homework, especially after coming off a tough win last week over yeah. Southeast Polk. And for our listeners out there, Waukee is beating Southeast Polk in Runnels tonight. Uh, just kind of an FYI there. So we, we know that Southeast Polk team was pretty good. And it was 21-7, is that right? Uh, Waukee defeated uh, Southeast Polk. So uh, just some numbers to throw out there as Dowling will be facing Johnson next week and Valley will be home against Cedar Rapids Kennedy, Matt. Yeah, you know, the Valley Tigers just did, a, did an outstanding job defensively. And, you know, we talked about last week where we were able to establish the passing game a little bit, and tonight it was just a little bit off. But these last couple balls, the la the good thing about this drive right now is Zach Waters, I've thrown him, seen him throw the ball with some intensity and zip in these last few times, and it's going to build his confidence up as he moves forward here. Last catch by Connor Cook, moves the ball up to the 45-yard line. First down, Dowling from their own 45, 55 seconds remaining. Waters back to throw, and the pass is picked off. He looked to his left, receiver fell down. That was Lyman, and intercepted by Valley and out of bounds, and that'll do it. Tigers get the uh, interception. Hunter Underwood, I believe, number 32. You are tell. correct. Underwood with the interception for Valley, and that'll sew it up as 5'9", uh, senior linebacker, intercepts quarterback Zach Waters, and that'll do it. That's one of the things about these battles between these two schools. You know, you never know what you're going to get on a given night, and uh, Valley came out, and, and uh, you know, it really was about fewer mistakes. You know, Valley, did it. We, they didn't have those little penalties, and, and uh, Dowling did, on, especially on the offensive side of the ball. Yeah, it's opening drive, Maroons had two penalties. They only had three all against uh, Waukee last week. And now victory formation for Valley. We'll have to snap the ball one more time as the Tigers yeah. take over on the Dowling 34-yard line. And congratulations to uh, Coach Gary Swenson, who got his 350th victory last week. Well, number 351 might be a little sweeter as they knocked off the, their rival, Dowling Catholic. Uh, we have one more snap by Lombardi as they assume the victory formation. The Tigers will kneel down one more time and they'll go on with a 20 to 6 win over Dowling Catholic. So, Matt, you go back to the drawing board and prepare for a very tough Johnson team who comes in ranked third and that'll be a tough ball game yeah. next Friday for Dowling at Johnson. It will be, you know, and defensively you walk away from this game and you say, you know, we played pretty well. You know, we had a short field there. They had the one big play and then we we gave them a short field and that was the 14 points and then we um, you know, Dowling gave up two field goals after that. Defensively, not bad, especially in that third quarter. We had the ball the whole time on our end of the field and just couldn't punch that punch that ball into the end zone. Valley led 14 to six at halftime, and they shut out Dowling in the second half and win it by the score of 20 to six. We'll take a break. Come back with post game from Drake Stadium. Once again, the final, Valley 20, Dowling Catholic 6, along with Matt Maindring. I'm Mark Amadale. John Chido on the sideline. He'll hook up with head coach Tom Wilson of Dowling Catholic. Following these words from our Central Iowa Metro League sponsors here on CISN.TV and Iowa Catholic Radio. Truck month at Schottenkirk Chevrolet Walkie. Up to 10,000 others off select new 18 Silverado 1500. Includes the LTZs and high countries. New 18 uh, Johnny Silverado might just want to try for Coach Wilson, and that's it. Yeah, I'll try to get them here after we. Equinox LT, 229 per month, only 19.99 do it signing. New 18 Cruise, 179 per month, only 19.99 do it signing. Plus 20 percent off new Spark, Sonic, and Impala through the end of the month. Schottenger Chevrolet Walkie, WalkieChevy.com. Here's to everyone who believes in competition and good sportsmanship, who knows it's not about the trophies or the medals, but rather the lessons learned. For those who understand, it's not whether you win or lose, just that you give your best. So go ahead, place them up, take the field, have fun, and play. For the experience, for the memories, for the love of the game, Shields. This is Iowa. And here, we don't just dream of a better tomorrow, of a smarter way to do business or live of perseverance and progress. We inspire it in others. We challenge the conventional, reimagine what it means to be better, and then dare ourselves to make it great. This is Iowa, and here, we don't just dream, we make history. Why do I look for the seal? It's about trust. Whether I'm buying a car, hiring a contractor, 
Finding a tax preparer or an honest mechanic, the Better Business Bureau seal means this business meets high standards. When I see the seal, I know I'll get what I pay for. No more taking chances and no more worries. And I feel good about supporting local businesses. My life is so much easier knowing I can always trust BBB accredited businesses. It pays to look for the seal. See for yourself at bbb.org backslash Iowa. And welcome back to Drake Stadium here in Des Moines. Mark Amadil, Matt Maindring, and uh, John Chidel. Final score, the Valley Tigers uh, stopped Dowling by the score of 20-6, to snapping a Dowling six-game winning streak. As we are here in the postgame show, the Valley Tigers celebrating on the far sideline with their fans here at Drake Stadium. Let's take a look at the final statistics tonight. I want to thank the Dowling coaching staff for providing that to us uh, to bring to you. And, Start off with totally offense tonight. Valley with 326 yards of total offense. Dowling with 343 yards of total offense. Maroons 178 yards in the air. And Valley with 173 yards in the air. Rushing Tigers with 148 yards on the ground. Dowling with 170 yards on the ground. Dowling was penalized six times for 35 yards. And Valley penalized twice for 10 yards tonight. Uh, the Maroons had uh, four interceptions or three interceptions tonight. They lost uh, a fumble and two interceptions to the Valley Tigers. First downs, Valley with 16, rather Dowling with 16 first downs, Valley with 11. And now we'll individually as both teams, if you're watching the game on CISN.TV, both teams will have a post-game prayer and we'll try to catch uh, maybe part of that with our PA announcer, Denny O'Grady. But uh, Zach Waters, 14 out of 28 passing, two interceptions for 173 yards and a touchdown tonight. Uh, Bo Lombardi was 11 out of 14 passing, 178 yards and a touchdown. Uh, the leading ground gainer for Dowling was Jason Murray, 25 carries, 153 yards. Uh, Zach Waters, nine carries for 18 yards. True Fug Trey Fugate, 21 carries, 135 yards and a touchdown. Creighton Mitchell, three carries for eight yards. And Bo Lombardi, five carries for negative one yards. Leading receivers tonight, Jack Lyman, four catches, 80 yards for Dowling and a touchdown. Edward Thompson, two catches for 42 yards. And Colin Cook had three catches for 30 yards. And Matt Stillwell, one catch for 15 yards. For Valley, Nate Wilcoxon, three catches, 70 yards. Trey Fugate, one catch for 30. Ryan New, one catch for 30 yards. And J.J. Gash, one catch for 22 yards. And finishing up the uh, receiving for Valley, Parker Marshall, two catches for 18 yards. So that's a look at some of the numbers tonight. Again, total offense, Dowling with 343 yards, Valley with 326, but the turnovers were the key as both teams now getting together here at Drake Stadium. And uh, for the uh, postgame uh, prayer, both teams come together and are getting together. And words being said by both teams' coaches, head coach Tom Wilson and Gary Swenson for the Valley Tigers. Uh, Matt Maindring. Yeah, you know, this is what makes high school sports special right here. It is. You, know, you take a moment and both teams uh, coming together after a hard-fought victory and, and uh, rivals on the field uh, coming together at the end. And uh, this, is, this is what makes high school sports different than everything else. And uh, we thank, you know, the, the Valley schools for reaching out and, and helping organize this. And I'm not sure who's leading uh, the prayers down there uh, for both sides, and uh, it's just a nice gesture. It certainly is. Let's run down the scoring tonight before we go to break, and I know John Chido will catch up with head coach Tom Wilson. John is uh, awaiting the postgame uh, prayer that's going on on the field between the two teams. It all started in the first quarter with Valley going four plays, 85 yards, and capped off by a Trey Fugate 66-yard run, the extra point by Cole Peterson made it 7-0 Valley as they go four plays, 85 yards, and lead it 7-0. At the end of the first quarter, Valley comes back, and Bo Lombardi on a one-yard run, capping off a five-play, 20-yard drive. And that drive started after the uh, Dowling fumble by uh, Zach Prey, recovered by Valley at the Dowling 20, and they go five plays, 20 yards. Extra point by Peterson. Gave Valley a 14-0 lead at the end of the first quarter. And then in the second quarter, 6.47 remaining, Jack Lyman, a 66-yard touchdown pass. Uh, reception from quarterback Zach Waters. The extra point was no good. And we go to halftime with uh, Valley leading 14-6. to six. And the fourth quarter is a pair of field goals by Valley's Cole Peterson, one from 32 yards out, made the score 17-6. to six. 
And the final one with five and a half minutes remaining from 27 yards out made the score, our final score, 20 to 6 Valley over Dowling. We'll take a break here on the post game show. The teams coming together, post game prayer, great uh, sign of sportsmanship. And, uh, you know, I'll tell you what, you talk about Christian values, you're seeing it right down here, following a very intense game between two rivals, Matt. You know, you see these kids, and, and like you said, when we started the game, you know, they're neighbors, they, and they do different things together, and uh, they're showing us, the kids are showing us here how it, how it should be done. All right, we'll take a break on the postgame show. We'll come back for an interview on the field with uh, Dowling head coach Tom Wilson. Final score, Valley 20, Dowling 6, here on Iowa Catholic Radio and the Central Iowa Sports Network. Best deals of the year at Schottenkirk Ford Indianola. During the Ford Summer Sales Event in Indianola, get 0% for 60 months, plus up to $10,000 off select new 18 Ford F-150 XLT. 0% for 72 months, plus $1,000 on select new 18 Edge. Escape and Explorers. You get all of the rebates, incentives, and discounts, plus more for your trade. 0% for 60 months, plus up to $10,000 off select new F-150s won't last. Only at Schottenkirk Ford Indianola. SchottenkirkFord.com. Building a strong community doesn't happen overnight. It takes a vision for the future, the ability to turn a challenge into a success, and individuals who inspire new generations of growth. Greater Des Moines has done a lot of growing over the years, and so have we. At Brick Gentry Law, your success is something that we create together. Thank you for making us a part of your community. Thank you for 50 years. Hi, I'm Chris with Fireplace Superstore. It's August and time for our early end of season sale. Groups that we have too many of are marked way down, like this Sun Villa group. Hey, Johnny, we're just going to do you and Coach Wilson after this, and or we're this done. this North Cape Avant group, sofa or sectional, 20% off. Or this great Lloyd Flanders Charleston group, $1,000 off to $32.99. The best weather for outdoor furniture is still ahead of us, and we still have Iowa's largest selection. Miss your hometown clothing store, the one that had it all, everything to get the work done all in one place? GNL Clothing is your hometown Iowa store. Stop in and see us, or we're only a click or phone call away. Family owned for nearly a century, GNL Clothing, 1801 Ingersoll, Des Moines. And welcome back to Drake Stadium. Mark Amadale, Matt Mandering on the postgame show. Final score, Valley 20 and Dowling Catholic 6. And now the look at the series, Matt, uh, Dowling winning six of their last eight games coming in tonight. Well, the Valley Tigers, their last win was uh, back in 2016, a 16-9 win at Valley Stadium over the Maroons. When tonight, uh, the win, and uh, it's just back and forth. This is the 50th year these two teams have played. Uh, each other and between them they've got 13 state championships in class 4a and we saw Danny tonight we saw the Valley defense really control the game after Dowling spent a lot of the second half in the red zone at, inside the 50th Valley the Tiger defense just a, uh, a little bit better tonight uh, in game one and maybe a two-game matchup this year you never yeah. know it always seems the paths cross twice and uh, you know the <laughs> The uh, you had to tip your hat to the Tigers tonight. They did do a good job defensively. Were able to stymie us and and keep Jason you know contained. And uh, Jason's had some big nights. And tonight he got a couple bursts in there, but nothing consistently. So um, now we're ready to go down and and get some words from Coach Wilson. Well, here's something we haven't done. We interviewed Coach Wilson after a loss. It hasn't been that many here in the last uh, several years, but we're going to talk to him tonight and uh, we'll go down to our Shields sideline reporter. That is John Chido, and he has the Dowling head football coach, Tom Wilson, after Valley's win 20-6. to John, take it away. Coach, a uh, hard-fought ball game as, as expected. Uh, you guys had more yardage than Valley and uh, it just came down to turnovers and uh, penalties and there at the end, uh, beginning of the game. And, and your thoughts on the game tonight? I think the bottom line is they made plays and we didn't. Um, you know, they uh, caused us some, into some turnovers. Um, you know, you go back to the end of the, the half there in the first half and, and we have the open receiver and, and um, we don't connect on it. And, and uh, you know, again, it's not one or two guys issue. It's a, it's a team issue. It just it, it didn't work. And, 
So every time it seemed like we got something going, then we would stall out. And I think you have to give Valley some credit for that. But we felt like we were we kept killing ourselves. And you know, you only score six points and you don't give your defense a chance. I thought our our defense played their hearts out, but. Uh, you know, their back was against the wall too often, and, and uh, it's tough to win games that way. I guess the thing you look at going into next week is what type of football team you have. They're going to rise to the challenge and move forward and get this game behind them because there's a lot more games ahead of you. Oh, you're right, and, and to be honest with you, I feel good about this group of kids. Um, you know, I don't fault their effort. Um, I told them that after the ball game. You know, I fault us uh, not making enough plays, and there's some play calls that I faulted myself as well. Um, you know, the interception uh, deep down here that, that waters through, honestly, that wasn't a very smart call on my part. I should have called it to the boundary and didn't. But uh, in hindsight, uh, I'd like to have that one back. But, you know, it, it happens. Um, we have to get better. It's, it's one of the things that we've continued to tell our kids. And uh, I think they'll certainly believe that. But I believe in this group. And uh, win, lose, or draw, they're, they're a great group to coach. And we're going to keep plugging away and see what happens. Okay, Coach, thanks for your time, and good luck next week. All right, John Chido on our Shields sideline report with uh, head coach Tom Wilson of Dowling following the Maroons' loss tonight here at Drake Stadium. Valley 20, Dowling 6, our final score. Matt Madrian, before we go, got one announcement I know you want to get in, and that includes the uh, campus minister at Dowling, Father Zach Kotsky, and uh, maybe a new campus minister coming aboard. Yeah, Bishop Pates this week announced at Mass that uh, Zach, Father Kotsky, is going to go to the Air Force. Uh, he's applied to be a chaplain. Uh, for the United States Air Force and kind of fitting on Armed Forces Night. Absolutely. Uh, it's, it's been a passion of his, and so uh, in December uh, he will be done as the chaplain at, at Dowling Catholic, and uh, we have uh, another Dowling graduate ready to take the baton from him, uh, Deacon Ryan Andrew is an 04 grad, and uh, he will uh, join the priesthood. Uh, he will be ordained, I believe it's on December 14th, and then in the second semester, uh, take over full-time chaplain duties. Right now, he's on our staff as a teacher, and uh, he's teaching a couple classes, and uh, uh, he's just a joy to have around. Well, Matt, thank you very much. I know you we're going to see you in a couple weeks as uh, Dowling. You take next week off. We have Mr. Marcoulia back in, and uh, enjoy your time. But, hey, get back on the winning track All right. as uh, Dowling falls tonight. Thank you, Matt. You bet. Thank Matt, you, Mark. Matt Madring and, of course, John Chidel on the sideline, our, my broadcast partner. And that will wrap it up tonight from Drake Stadium. want to thank everybody involved with the broadcast, including, including our studio producer for Iowa Catholic Radio. Back at the station is Jeff Pickett. And right here, our studio producer at Drake Stadium for the Central Iowa Sports Network, Justin Wolbert. Great job out of both of them. We want to thank them for everything they do. And the staff at, uh, on the TV side, Clayton Sampson, Ann Bassett and uh, Kofi Mateo doing a great job. We appreciate all their work tonight, and uh, hopefully you will too when you can watch the reruns on CISN.TV. I'd like to thank our halftime guest, Dr. Dan Ryan, the president of Dowling Catholic High School, and all the folks at Valley, uh, including athletic director Brad Rose and head coach Gary Swenson. And from Dowling, head coach Tom Wilson, and, of course, Michael Connor, who kind of coordinated this effort tonight, getting everybody put up. He did a little bit of work, and we appreciate everything Mike does and everybody back at Dowling. Join us for our next sports broadcast right here on Iowa Catholic Radio next Friday, number one Dowling, which will probably not be number one. Be on the road at number three Johnson. Pre-game at 6.30, kickoff 7 o'clock from Johnson High School. We'll have the coverage here on Iowa Catholic Radio. On CISN.TV, they will be uh, home over at Valley Stadium as the Valley Tigers uh, host uh, a nice opponent next week, and that they take on Cedar Rapids Kennedy, ranked number nine. And that game will start at 7.30. There will be a preliminary game beginning at 4.45 at Valley Stadium. For my broadcast partners, Matt Maindring and John Chido, this is Mark Amadale. Thank you for listening to tonight's game here on Iowa Catholic Radio. And the final score once again for the final time, Valley 20, Dowling 6. Uh, good night from Drake Stadium in Des Moines, and have a blessed and faith-filled week.